I can tell the, the setup, the setup, we'll talk about that with the bike. Well, let, let me just get going here. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, we got Yo Viral on tonight. Yeah, da, 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 da. On. Guys, listen, we're here. We're live. Brand new Poker Live podcast. GTO headquarters, Las Vegas, Nevada, home of the World Series of Poker 2022. Look at that beautiful Las Vegas Boulevard strip, Fremont Street. You don't want to end up there unless you're getting out of line and uh, it's 2 a.m. But listen, we're here right now. Big Poppy joining him one up all night at the World Series of Poker, grinding the great game of Potlaman Omaha High Stakes. And listen, guys, we got we got quite the interesting show here today. You know, my last video, I had a, uh, a cheating investigation going on down there in Houston. Shout out to Dirty John. Listen, Houston, my man's been talking to me on Twitter, and uh, he seems real fired up. So I my my investigation has led me down another path. And uh, I got an invite when Live at the Bike was getting their, their stream going back on. I got an email from uh, a man named Rick and it said, okay, hey, we'd like you to come out here. And I said, Rick and Houston Curtis. And I was like, wait a second. I definitely heard the name Houston Curtis before. I heard this name before. I'm pretty sure this guy wrote a book about cheating, allegedly in a poker game, right? With the, with the Tobey Maguire game, the Molly's game, right? He wrote his version of the game of the story. <laughs> this is my this is my impression right i see this oh, yeah, on there yeah, i say ahead. i say i say wait a second you know what what is you know how is this guy basically running a poker game right this guy wrote a book about being he makes videos about about how to how to be a card mechanic how to be an advantage player basically what i see it is how to cheat at these different games so wrote a book about this stuff and i know we talked before in the past about potentially doing a podcast together and I asked you about the shuffler machine stuff down at the Houston investigation. And you said, I got a lot of information. You were giving me more information about that. And then uh, you wanted to talk more about why exactly you took over live with the bike. And then uh, a bunch of other topics sort of came up. So I said, you know what? Let's do it. Let's make this happen. Let's get you on the show. And uh, let's just learn more, man. Because I think me and a lot of other people out there in poker are wondering, how did you go from... Uh, maybe being involved in some of the things you may or may not have been involved with in the past to now operating a live stream where we've already had issues with live streams in the past where where if you can see the cards in the back, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's a pretty big advantage for a guy like yourself if you got the skills, if you got the ability, if you got some of the experience in doing some of these things. So that's that's that i just i gotta set that up front i'm passionate about this topic bro you know what i'm saying i did 40 fucking hours i did 40 days straight of mike possible looking at his crotch theory optimal down there and uh, so this fires me up so I, I do like to welcome you to the podcast houston and uh, we're going to talk more about your life your experiences as a as a producer in hollywood playing in some of these high stakes poker games playing blackjack and uh, I know you got a whole lot of other things you'd like to talk about too. So I'd like to welcome you to the Poker Live podcast. I know the chat's fired up. And uh, how's it going? How are you doing today? Th th thanks for having me on, uh, Joe. I, I appreciate it. I uh, I hope to shed you know some light on uh, uh, some of the topics that you're passionate about, that your audience is passionate about, uh, as well as you know the things that uh, that we talked about uh, in terms of uh, Texas and uh, you know these things that are going on. Look. Um, you know, I the one thing I want to just say out of the gate is that uh, uh, I'm not going to come on here and deny that uh, I had a past in my 20s um, at, where where I I was a very skilled, still am a skilled, you know, uh -oh. uh, technician with it with a deck of cards. But, you know, where I, uh, you know, did some uh, uh, some things in my 20s that you're when you're young and stupid, you do these things. Um, but you know, the people that, um, that any major casino goes to when it comes to game protection, uh, is someone who understands it. Now I don't claim to be, um, an expert, uh, you know, on, on all forms of game protection. I specialize in poker, always have, um, you know, I know a little bit about blackjack as well, mm -hmm. but I deplore cheating. Uh, I, uh, want that to to be known i think everyone should know how to spot cheats now on the same side of that coin i love uh i'm also a lover of magic and card manipulation you know and a big part of my audience uh, especially earlier on the, all the requests i was getting they're all magicians who was <laughs> watching those videos but now it's um now i think there's going to be a lot of poker players uh coming in to to get some real advice because i feel like this generation of players who are playing now 
are, and, and you know, you said it uh, yourself in uh, some of our back and forth. I think it's the most vulnerable time ever for for uh, players playing this game. Uh, a lot of the, the younger generation, they just do not understand how they can be taken. You guys have played so many damn hands online. You've seen every <laughs> variable, every every possible outcome mm -hmm. uh, that could happen in a hand. So all of a sudden you get into some private game and, you know, you get a double duke or you get cracked on a one out or, or, you know, and you're just like, well, you know, that's, that's poker, you know, but if you know how to uh, spot certain things, especially, you know, in games where you don't know everyone, which is always a, a risk, um, you can protect yourself from a lot of shenanigans. So, so basically, right. My, my sort of thesis on when I start, you know, a big reason why I left poker was I realized it's a cheater's paradise where if you want to, if you want to cheat at poker and you're a motivated person is basically the easiest thing I've ever heard of in my life, because now you got these application based programs where me, you, a couple buddies, we load up an app for a game. We yeah. got all the action. We're sharing action. We invite the people in. I mean, listen, this, this ain't new thing, right? This is what the billion dollar heist was all about, you know, but now instead of having to do it in a Hollywood mansion, I could do it on a on my cellular device while I'm sitting on a toilet, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's just time right. to change. And you're mentioning now private games are kind of picking up in steam. So, and now we're seeing that with the Houston investigation that's going down in Houston, Texas, the last video I did, where allegedly they brought these card machine, they brought these shuffler machines into a couple tables right. and then a couple pros went down there and they said that there's a couple of ringers cleaning up the games. The management quit working at the place because they were like, something's going on here. The players staged a walkout because they're like, something's going on here. And then the shuffle machines get taken out of that. And I mentioned that to you and you and you, you said, I got insight in, you know, maybe what's going on there. So maybe we, we you know, I feel like, I, I feel like we can start a lot of different places here. And uh, I do want to say now just to kind of, reset the table again. So you are currently the executive producer of Live at the Bike, which was has been one of the more popular streams. And Live at the Bike was sold to new ownership and to new people that are in charge. And still people are still working with the company that were still with the company before, but now it's under yes. new leadership. All the guys are there. Right, under new management. You and another gentleman, it seems like, came in. And we can talk more about that, that deal sure. if you'd like to. Uh, in the sure. future, but I do want to touch on this last video I did, which was about the Houston investigation. Yeah. Because I mean, if I got you on here and you obviously got a lot of experience with this stuff, so why don't we get into to that topic and and maybe you share some thoughts on on what you think was going on with that situation? Yeah. So, first first thing I want to say is I I, I still firmly believe that the Shuffle Master brings more security to uh, a game than not having one. Games are much more vulnerable, in my opinion, without one. However, if you have every cheat uh, throughout the history of gambling, whenever they make new technology, there is some cheat out there who figures out how to crack it. This is what you told, this is what you told me, Houston. You said there are, there are people that spend thousands of hours. Like we, I'm spending thousands of hours on the solver they're spending thousands of hours with the shuffler machine, with the deck of cards, with their systems, so, with their processes. Yeah, so, exactly. So you you know the solver. Well, you know, uh, the, the, I mean, I could have three PhDs for the amount of time that I spent with, with a deck of cards in my hands in my youth, right? Um, I, I always say skills of a misspent youth. But um, but these guys, uh, there, are, there are guys uh, around the country who are specialists in cracking these... Uh, any type of device that is going to lead them to a positive outcome in a gambling uh, scenario. So here's the here's the deal with the shuffle masters. Now, the 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 shuffle master that I feel is more secure to use, and I don't know if you you, you call it deck made or whatever, but but the the versions the, the older versions ran a little differently um, than the newer ones, mm -hmm. and uh, the newer ones are more complex. Uh, but but to do what these guys are doing, they have to be compromised either way. And they can compromise the older ones. It's just much more difficult. The newer ones, uh, while more secure in that the there's a camera that is built into the, the machine. Right. And the way the Shuffle Master works, it takes a picture of every card. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's part of the process to know that someone didn't, like the old ones, there was a radar to... Uh, to know like if a card was missing it wouldn't complete the shuffle 
or if it had too many, it wouldn't complete the shuffle. But it couldn't determine if an ace of spades was pulled out and an extra king of diamonds was stuck in. Okay, that that was from from you know my my understanding of the older machines, but the newer ones can tell that. So that and, is a very protected. And major. when you say newer ones, you're referring to I mean it's kind of an older machine. The shuffle deck mastered the it's like called shuffle deck master two. It's got a, it looks like it has a few names. I went through the patent. I I got about. 35 emails about the about these shuffle machines. I feel like I, I know way too much about a shuffle machine now. I can never look yeah, at a I'm shuffle sure. machine the same I'm way sure again. You do. After... Well, you're going to learn a little bit more today. I okay. Think. Uh... So 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 why don't, so touch on that, right? So now with these All shuffle right. machines, right? Basically, it appears that you can you can set these decks up. You can set the the shuffle up whenever you might want to to set up coolers to set the deck and you can give somebody a best hand and they might not even know that they're getting the best hand as well too so like there's a lot of different strategies that could be used there, in this there situation. are two, two different ways that these things can can be um manipulated uh this way you're talking about is much more sophisticated and requires a higher level of sophistication as far as the tampering goes and we can talk about that in a minute that's that is not um from my knowledge, that is not what was happening in Texas. Okay. There is another method um, that uh -oh. I don't think you have heard about. Maybe you have, but here's how here's how it works. The machine, there is a guy outside in a car. <laughs> okay, there's a guy off site. All right, there is a device put into the machine that will send a signal to this guy uh, who is part of the what we what we would call the mob. Okay. The mob. Uh, and at the table, the mob. Okay. It's, it's a, it's a, a, a term, you know, term of kind of a sharp term given to any guys who are, whether they're just hustling a game or cheating a game, you know, the game's mobbed up, right? Is, is what, okay. is what you'd say in, in the biz. Sure. Okay. We're learning so, the terminology here. Okay. So, so yeah, so the game's mobbed up. So there's usually at least three guys uh, working in the mob, right? One guy's going to be your action guy um, who's going to look like the donkey at the table, right? and uh, probably losing a lot. And then there's gonna be a couple guys who are big winners. That's, you know, and, and there's variations of that, but that's the basic uh, kind of way they set it up. So then there's the fourth partner, the guy who is out in, and they could have more than just, just you know, they could have the entire table except for one pitiful mark, you know, mm. uh, but usually it's like three, maybe four guys. So this signal, uh, they get, they tamper, uh, with the machine. Now, obviously this means that someone in the card room itself is in on it, which is why this is happening in Texas. And I will talk to you more about Texas. Uh, cause we know that these aren't like regulated card rooms. You know, they, they found a way to skirt the law in Texas and some of the card rooms there are running very legit. Like I, I haven't been to Doug Polk's place, but I, if I had to bet money with a gun to my head, I would bet anything he's got that place running super clean, mm -hmm. just based on what I know about, you know, uh, Doug. But not all of these places are like that. And when they first opened, just so you know, I was getting calls from guys I've known, you know, for years who are like, you're not going to believe what's going on in Texas. Dealers were walking in with their own decks of cards. Can you imagine? I mean, they were bringing their own decks from home. Mm -hmm. and, and take it at table to table to deal. It was the wild west. It was the wild west. Mm -hmm. So so they get to shuffle master. They rig it to send a signal to the guy in the car. What happens is the guy in the car has, because it takes a picture of the entire deck order, if the, the cards are dealing around and, and say I'm in seat three, right? And I'm the signal guy. I'm in seat three. Uh, and I look down and the first card I'm dealt is a jack of hearts. I signal back to the guy in the car using text or, or uh, you know, they have other methods to do that, but I let him know what my card is. As soon as he knows what my card is, he enters um, that into this algorithm and the algorithm, all it does is it, it's, it's not too sophisticated. It just spits him back the top three hands at the table. So I would let him know my first card is a Jack of hearts. Then I immediately get a text back saying, uh, hands seats one, five, and seven are number best hand, second best hand, third best hand. Now you can only imagine. Now, now I signal that information to the to the, my partners at the table, and you can only imagine, you know, the incredible edge, uh, the unbeatable edge that you have at that point. And that that is how uh, it works. That is how they did it. Um, 
at the place that you're talking about. I can also tell you how to uh, make sure that even if the guy's sitting out there in the car and they're all ready to steal your money, to make sure they never get a dime of it. Well, let's let's, let, let's unpack we'll that because I that in a minute. you're you're actually telling. I mean, I I don't I didn't put all the information that I know in my last video because I I do know some more information, and you're basically describing a lot of information that I didn't put in the video that people told me about that I wasn't really sure. Like, well, what does that matter? And now, why would the first card matter is very important because, as you just described, why the first card matters. So, and why you might yeah. use a headphone at the table. I mean, to me, listen, Houston. You yeah, know, they, playing, can, have a, they can have a wire headphone to make it easy. That, and, that, and, that, and that's what's going on. And, and what I'm seeing, right, I'm playing last night. I'm playing all night. Potlum and Omaha, great game. Uh, by the way, listen, I'm be at World Series all summer on my Instagram story. I'm posting on there, on Twitter. I'm meeting people. I'm doing shows. I'm out here grinding. I'm saying what's up to everyone. I'm going down to Doug Polk's great new card room, the Lodge, this weekend, doing some commentary on a high-stakes game for a coin flex event as well, too. So I'll be down there. Check it out for the first time. I haven't seen it yet. And, and we want to have you over live at the bike. Man, I don't know, but I mean, you know, I don't know, man. Like, I, I, and we can get back to what are you to, saying? I don't know. What are you talking? I about? don't know, man. Like, listen, you, it, it's, it's, it's hard for me to, you know, and I know the people that run these games, but you, you got the, you got the, this, 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 this certain set of skills, right? What's the, what's that guy's name? Liam Neeson. I got a certain set of skills. Anytime I want to flip, You're anytime I go back guy, to the Joe, youth, I maybe think. that youth kicks back in, and all of a sudden you go, fuck this guy. Let's give them this. You know what I'm saying? Like that's something to me. And I, and I mean, I don't know. You laugh about it, but I'm serious, right? And I, I think a lot I, of other well, people I, out there I, are I, serious I, too. I, it, it troubles me that you are serious because uh, there's zero um, upside for you know. I don't know if you read my book or if you just heard about you know me talk uh, these stories about me talking about my past. But you know, man, I mean, I uh, I lost everything. I lost, you know, I built a big company, millions of dollars. Uh, and, and not through, you know, <laughs> through, uh, 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 through poker is some of it through poker, but not through cheating, um, and through television and, uh, you know, 2008 hit and, you know, we had a guy in our game who was robbing a hedge fund to pay for his poker debts. And, and this, it was like the biggest gift you could ever imagine. This guy was losing six figures every time he played and, uh, Toby and I were trying to get him books you know, to, to learn how to play. So he wouldn't lose to everybody. But, uh, turns out this guy was, uh, you know, robbing a hedge fund and, uh, and paying his poker debts with it. And, and when 2008 hit, you know, my, my world collapsed. I, I, you know, I wake up one day and my, my, my house, my $3 million dream home is, is worth like 1.1 million. And then there's a 750 K lien put on it because that's the amount of checks I had to take from that guy, uh, through, through the game. And uh, there's some weird bankruptcy loophole law that says, you know, if someone pays you with stolen money, they can get it. The, the government can take it back, mm -hmm. uh, you know, even though the money was was won uh, lawfully. So a lot of the guys, you know, paid a bunch of money for attorneys and settled for 50 cents on the dollar. I ended up, you know, losing everything, had a heart attack, died on the table at Cedar sinai uh, And, you know, my my uh, my whole life turned upside down. Mm -hmm. And this was on the heels of the UB scandal and all of this stuff, uh, you know, that, that happened like kind of in a, in a just, you know, bad beat sequence. Um, but, you know, having the opportunity to uh, uh, do what I love uh, with, you know, a show like Live at the Bike that, in my opinion, is um, say say i'm i'm not there you know wayne you know brian these guys are beyond reproach and i can guarantee you uh if there if there was an outside auditing company that wanted to come around and audit every live stream uh in existence today the best most secure live stream running right now 100 percent is live at the bike hmm. i i would i would take that bet with anybody so, so let me uh, let me touch on a few things you said, right? So you mentioned, you know, kind of kind of the main point going back to to my main question, which is just like why, for me, right? Like why why would I, like why would I go there, right? Why would I want to play? Why would I recommend anyone go play on live at the bike? Because I know, and and that's sort of, and honestly, I'm a little like shocked that this story hasn't been discussed in poker yet. You know, you got Berkey going out there playing, you got Garrett out there playing, and you know, I came back to poker about a month ago. I'm real shocked that like no one's really brought this up, this topic up because I feel like the scandals that we've seen in poker with this exact situation, like 
It's like if Mike Passo was like, oh, I'm starting a live stream. Like, you know, I, I got security. Like, I'm a game security expert now, right? And maybe, maybe listen, maybe I, maybe when I got a job in the future and I need to make sure make sure it's, it's running right, maybe I bring Mike Passo in as a consultant, right? And I say, yo, Passo, listen, man, I know we got some history, right? You know, here's 10,000. Why don't you come in? Why don't you take a look at things like that? You know, maybe, maybe that is the guy I might go to. But it would seem it would seem kind of insane to say that like then this person who has this should be involved in it at all. You know what I mean? Like I see, I understand what you're saying, right? You got passion. You've had a lot of experience. You've had ups. You've had downs. You had experience, as you mentioned, with Molly's game, with the character, the big Brad guy, the hedge fund guy who was allegedly you know stealing money from the hedge fund, lose it in the poker game to the bet. Oh, he he wasn't business. allegedly. He went to prison. Right. <laughs> so okay. He was and, convicted. And then, uh, you know, you guys were running the game. You guys were running the operation there. You mentioned in the book, you were basically setting this game up to bring in these whales. This is a common, this how private games work, right? You set the game up, you bring in the whales. The whales don't know how to play poker. You sometimes give them deals. You give them money, yeah. you give them drinks, you get them fucked up, you give them girls, you give them drugs. Like, you know, that we know how these private games work. This is how they're still working to this day right now yeah, in Las Vegas and in LA. But, but yeah, I'm that, but kind of tracing back, right? Like, but, but I, I, mean, I think how it's our games though. ran. If you read the book, you would know that. But, but, but a lot what, of, well, I mean, I mean, I mean, just because it's in the book don't mean it's true, right? Like, I'm not going to go read a book and say, I read a lot of books that just because whatever's in the book doesn't necessarily mean like that's 100% a fact of, of how things went down or that's exactly oh, the you, viewpoint you, of things you, like that. that that's, that, that's true. And, uh, you know, and, and there, look, there, there were a lot of, um, you know, I, uh, there were a lot of, uh, things about the book that, um, you know, I, I, uh, uh, I, I wish, you know, didn't exist there were certain little mistakes that were made things that i can't do anything about mm -hmm. at least not in a in a first printing but um you know what i really wanted to establish in, in the book uh is i just wanted to be honest about my past and at the time when i wrote it joe i was starting to do more um uh more things uh, i kind of retired from poker pretty much and uh, I was doing more uh, consulting and I was doing, uh, uh, you know, just kind of picking up my love of sleight of hand more in the kind of magic arena. And, and I thought, you know what, if I'm going to go in and, and tell the, the whole reason I wrote the book. I could have gotten a huge advance to write that book way sooner. Like right and you're, you're referring to the billion, the billion dollar. The, yeah, I mean, right I mean, Molly we're really not talking about the book. book. We're really not talking about the book right now, right? I mean, I, 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 I guess I understand the book. I'd like to, you know, move on to because so, I, I, I can understand, right? I, and I've been in the process of reading the book. I've listened to a lot of interviews you did. I listened to the right. thir the Third Walking podcast recently. Uh, you know where they kind of the the I think that's uh, in collaboration with one of Bart's. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not on the guy's name right now, but I, I was listening to this podcast the other day. He was kind of just going into the book. He said he was a commentator on Live at the Bike. He felt uncomfortable continuing on Live at the Bike due to the involvement yeah. that you were in. So, I mean, if you're making people uncomfortable to quit their jobs because they might not want to be associated with you or with the things that you've done. I know you mentioned JJ. I know you mentioned Wayne. I mean, listen, those guys been there a long time, right? You know, yeah. why would they, like Wayne's been doing this for a long time, man. You know, I, I don't, I think Wayne's got hope. He's optimistic Dude, guy. I, I, he wants it, he wants things to be on the up. It's a great staff. It's a great staff, and I, I think I think you're uh, you're you're being a little short sighted to say that I you you so you think everyone should just run away from a guy who no not wrote abs about abs his abs life absolutely and, not absolutely not absolutely not right because I mean I know a lot of guys I'm friends with people they they're not I'm not perfect they're not perfect you're not perfect and none of these people in the chat who are critiquing people on fucking Twitter all day and in YouTube videos are also right, perfect right, themselves. Right. And we all make mistakes, but but with that said, right, it's not, this is a serious thing to me, right? You're running a poker game where they're playing for tens of thousands of dollars with people who, right, I've worked in Live at the Bike. I've been a promoter for Live at the Bike. I had yeah. my own week in yeah. Live at the Bike. Big Poppy joining your one pot when I'm all the great right. game week, right? So when I say, okay, well now they're, now they're gonna be using me to promote the game, so that 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 that's sort of where I'm coming from, right? So I, so that that that's that, why. That's fine, Joe. What, right. Let me ask you something. What do I have to do to uh, to sh to prove to you uh, how secure our game is? Because I want to do that. That's very important to me. Mm -hmm. It's very important to me that uh, uh, especially a Joe Ingram mm -hmm. uh, looks at live at the bike and says, you know what? Uh, yeah, the guy the guy wrote the book. He said what he said. And by the way, I was never accused of cheating from anyone else. Any any of these stories that you hear all came, you know, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, 
from me just telling about my life. Mm-hmm. What do I need to do to, to gain your trust? Because I got to tell you, the trust of someone like you is very meaningful to me. I care yeah. about this game. I care about Live at the Bike. The last thing in the world I want to do is alienate anyone from this show. It's one of the uh, the greatest staffs in, in poker. And um, we, we take no dirty money in our games. Uh, you know, uh, it's all clean money. Everything's run above board. The game is incredibly secure. And, you know, we're constantly making sure uh, that if there's any just one little thing we can do to make it more secure, mm-hmm. uh, we do that. Yeah, it's a good it's a good question, Houston, because the thing what number one thing I've learned is that you really can't stop it. As I said, it's a paradise. You know, if I don't want to get caught, you ain't going to catch me in, in these kind of situations, because once you get good, I mean, listen, you're an expert, right? So I'm giving you a lot of credit when when I say these things is that. Like you're from Hollywood. You know what I know about Hollywood? These guys are completely full of fucking shit for the people I know from Hollywood, right? I'm not saying they're not good people privately. I'm not saying that they aren't people you want to spend time with. I know a lot of people that are in the entertainment industry. I've dealt with a lot of people over time. I know a lot of stories. I know some good people. I know some people who are, they say one thing to your face. They get they got media training. They got PR training. These guys are experts at being completely full of shit. So I'm, I'm, I just get hesitant, right? I know that you've been involved in that world for a long time. You're as, 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 as your profile reads, right? I mean, I'm just going sort of, there's, there's of a what lot I'm of Hollywood seeing. scumbags out you're, there. I'm not going to, exactly. Gonna that's what I'm saying. Right. So, and, and they would, they're not, if you think I had them on there, you're going to, they're going to, you know what I'm saying? So that's sort of where, you know, anyone that's a, a, that says to be an expert marketer, someone that, you know, I'm, I, I do a lot of marketing. I know how easy it is to, to you're a great marketer, right. To, to shift these things or to say these things like that. Right. So in terms of how it could be proven secure to me, I mean, I don't know. Right. Like I'm not, I'm not going to go in there every stream and investigate the, the, the shuffle machine and investigate the newest ways that people might be getting an edge or colluding and stuff like that. So, but at the same time, right. You know, I feel like out of, out of, it is something that I'm listening to. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have the conversation. I'm trying to kind of figure it out more. And on one hand, you know, my intuition tells me like, you know, this just shouldn't happen in poker, man. Right? Like, well, this, well, this, should, this shouldn't when be. You this, say shouldn't... this shouldn't happen. What do you mean? You mean you mean a, a guy who, um, you know, uh, wrote about some stuff that he did, uh, you know, when he was younger, mm-hmm. who now is living a, a completely different life. Uh, that guy should never be trusted again. So like, no, no, uh, no. I'm not saying not trusted, right? I mean, I, I, I mean, tr- being trusted is one thing, but I mean, there being was in never the operation a, a non-trust is a different issue with thing. me anyway. Uh, throughout my entire career, you mm-hmm. know, what I told about in my book was was literally, uh, you know, a kind of just like a a cleansing of just wanting to, you know, everyone has things in their past, Joe. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. How how you how you um carry yourself in the present dealing with those things in the past is what separates the men from the boys and um you know i don't know you know how it'll be when we in this in in this show and i want to have some fun with you and and talk and everything but but i it is very important to me uh to 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 have the trust of someone like yourself and other people that i i these young guys like you that i respect uh in this industry you know the the poker has changed and the way people look at cheating has changed over the years. Uh, some of it is just, you know, generational. Mm-hmm. And um, the one good thing that that uh, all of the Internet and Twitter and all of the social media it brings uh, and it started, you know, back with the um, online, uh, uh, you know, gaming scams is the more people can talk and have a, a, a voice and, um, you know, they can figure shit out, you right. know, and that's how like things like, you know, the UB and absolute poker scandal was brought down and, and full tilt and all of that stuff. Uh, but the, um, you know, s- sometimes there is uh, uh, madness, uh, chaos in, in the crowd. And, um, you know, I, I, we, we need to lean to, to guys like yourself, to be able to discern what is and isn't, um, you know, uh, a Fugazi. <laughs> exactly. Right. I mean, I've been studying crypto for a, for the past 10 months, so I've seen a lot of Fugazis. I've been seeing how crypto, NFT, banking, finance, all this world works. And, you know, poker ain't not poker really not, not, not in compared to what's really happened out there. Did so you, did you do okay in the last, in the last 
in crypto the, crash. In, in the last crypto crash. I mean, listen, I'm doing podcasts and poker. What do you what do you, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm back. You know what I'm saying? I'm playing the World Series of Poker at 7 a.m. Uh, on a on a sorry, on, a, on a twenty on a twenty Adderall, right? Like I'm going down to the lodge, Texas, this weekend. You know what I'm saying? Like we're on a bear market right now. Okay, we gotta, you know. <laughs> I, I I listen. Yeah. Shout out to the chat. We got a lot of people in the chat fired up right now. What's going on? Welcome to the show. It's good to be back making content. I mean, I've been wanting to make content again. I'll be honest with you, but I've been looking for a time. World Series of Poker is around the corner. I'm fired up, and uh, I got some potential deals in the works. So I'm excited about that. We got all people in the chat. Chips McGee, Louis Rod. Leo Rod, shout out to the Legion. Legion, Legion. Dave Rickson, what's up, Dave? Justin Fats, what's going on? Shout out to Supreme Leader. Doug Polk out there. Uh, I know he's somewhere being being the Supreme Leader, Doug Polk. And uh, I kind of getting back to something that you talked about. You said that you're good friends with Russ Hamilton. Russ Hamilton being one of the biggest cheats of all time in poker. I mean, listen, this is Russ Hamilton. He had the original live at the bike when he had ultimate bet. He had well, access look, to the cards. What did he do? He took there was some, there was millions some of dollars from people, right? But some heartbreaking stuff that, you know, look, when I knew Russ and, and, and was working with Russ, the guy that I knew uh, was a world-class card player, uh -huh. you know, a one of the, you know, a World Series of Poker Champion, obviously, but beyond that, a, a world-class card player. I mean, he came in our game once uh with i'm talking the big game with toby and played with his cards face down for an hour and was had broke even and then said okay i've done this for an hour now can i just play and of course toby wouldn't let him <laughs> but but that's the guy i knew uh -huh. and uh when all of this stuff um came out uh joe i was uh you know i look i don't the one thing that i can tell you uh about Russ uh, that is a bigger problem with, with all of this is, do you know who went to ask Russ about this? Bill no you. one, no one, no, FBI, no, there was no oversight, right? And that's the biggest problem with our industry. That's what we need to fix because with oversight, this ne problem never would have occurred. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he got no questions from the police, no questions from any legal authority uh, at all. Nothing, you know. And meanwhile, the Kawahaki gaming guys that uh, I don't know how much you knew about it, but, uh, you know, I mean, those guys were like, like, you know, the government wouldn't mess with them. They're like the Capone, you know, more dangerous than the Capone mob, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so, you know, I know that there's a lot of other factors to to the whole rust thing and he was kind of an old school guy and he's not the guy who's ever gonna like just because he's going down he wasn't going to take you know it's that old school mentality he wasn't going to take you know he wasn't going to rat anyone out but man i would love to know you know the the list because i'm sure it was a laundry list a mile long uh so you know. so speaking of that list you have an account on the list too i believe h underscore curtis was one of the accounts that was registered to you which was also was a super bummer yeah Right. So you're he, actually he, he, mentioned he, in the in the report, your account, right? Is mentioned I'm also vindicated. As, I am vindicated. You do your research. What is that? What, what is by who? Who vindicated uh, you? Well, the, you know, the secret tapes. Have you ever heard the secret tapes? I've heard I've heard this. I haven't listened to them in a while, but I've I've heard the secret oh, tapes. Well they yeah. talk about me specifically and he you know I had no idea <laughs> about any of that. He's like, Oh, you don't want to you know, this this H underscore Curtis account. Look, Russ gave you know all of us accounts so i don't i i don't know what happened but mm -hmm. i here's what i'm told with my account we we had a big show going and it, as things started getting um tougher they, there was like this law that was put on the back end of like a port security bill you you probably remember this it was the first big you know kick to the balls of online right poker. right right yeah and and it knocked the wind out of us because we were a, a big show and all of a sudden like all of the advertising money was was frozen we had to change the entire model we had to go from uh you know basically the model was ulti uh, the ultimate blackjack tour had a site called play ubt a free is the free site would push to the pay site and it was all a skin of ub right and I mean, we did 750K in new player signups on our first um, week. You know, we were off to the races. Uh, and then this happened. And, uh, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, maybe you could say people do desperate things when there's desperate times. All of a sudden, instead of getting 
you know, wires for the production funds, mm -hmm. you know, there were, there was a, a, a stretch there where, um, uh, I was getting production funded through this, uh, account. Mm -hmm. And I was, what I was told was that, uh, he was just going in and, and, uh, you know, uh, putting money in, into the account from one account, like one of his accounts to another. Right. You know, so I, which, which, which would be normal, right? I mean, when you, when you're operator of the site, you have access to the account, you're moving money back and forth. It seemed like the money was moving and flowing pretty easily back in the right through yeah, accounts, the, the right? Only, they're paying the for sponsorships, that, they're paying for deals, they're paying for people to go to events. Right. That, I mean, that's, this is still happening now. So this isn't, an, uh, this yeah, isn't. Uh, the only thing questionable at one, at one time, uh, you know, uh, he, there was, uh, we were in Vegas producing, uh, like season three, I think, which never aired, but seasons one or two did. And in Russ mentioned to me, he said, Hey, if you run into, uh, if Antonio mentions to you anything about playing like super high stakes deuce to seven triple draw last night, just kind of, you know, don't talk about it. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And I just assumed that he, maybe he went in there on his account and my account and, you know, lost a big hand to me. I, you know, I didn't. But you, you're and, a sharp guy, sure, though, right? Sure but enough, you, you uh, would, sure enough, you would I mean, know. But you, you like a sharp. You, you seem to me, right? Like you seem like you would know what's happening in some ways. You I, have an I, idea. I, you know, totally, you, totally maybe ask a question. You, Joe, uh, my, right? my, my, my knowledge in the online space. I was never an online player. Mm -hmm. I was never a big online poker player. You'll never see any. You know, if you, I didn't play a lot of tournaments. But if you look back at tournaments, yeah, I won like a 2004 Legends one of the legends events I was head up with Scotty win. Like, you know, you'll find stuff about me in poker in, in live games, cash games, and even tournaments, but online, I never, I, I literally maybe played, I wouldn't even say a hundred hours in my life, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so we were playing this new elimination blackjack term, which is why I even had the account. Otherwise I wouldn't even have even had a UB account. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think when I first, the first online, poker site I ever played on was um they was it they, for they changed the name to Hollywood Poker or they skinned it Hollywood Poker skinned it with Vince Van Patten and um oh uh, there was an actor they, they were doing something but it was it was some smaller site right. and I don't know why I chose that one over party poker or whatever I but I I, I honestly don't have much knowledge in that space just mm -hmm. so you know Shout out to Vince Ben Patton. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of skins out there. There's a lot of Love Vince ben knockoffs of sites. I mean, you know, ACR got a billion different skins. And, you know, we, we, we I don't think that's as popular. I mean, Gigi Parker got a lot of skins too, right? I don't think that's a, as popular thing as it was in the past. There was a lot of these little sites. As you mentioned, if you didn't really know the sites. I like, want to start you, playing now, actually. Like, now I'm excited to start, you know, get, I, I, getting you into play heads, it. You, you know? want to play heads up? Uh <laughs> Well, I don't know. I'm, lear I'm, I'm learning. I'm excited to play too. I just played last night till 7:30 a.m. I'm fired up. I'm ready to play. I'm ready. To, you, you come know, in the series. Hey, we gotta let's get some Palomino Omaha going. Let's go. Let's get some. What do you? What do you play? PLO, the great game, or hold great em? game? No, I was never. I was never much. I'm a, I was a hold'em specialist okay. when when I considered myself. You know, uh, you know. At one point, I was, you know, a very winning player. But but it was a very simple strategy, Joe. Yeah, uh, it was uh, we had guys in the game who were never going to run out of money and they were never going to get any better playing poker. <laughs> so so my, my, I, my and, and it was game I, selection and basically it ended there. <laughs> and this is actually what I what I've been thinking about recently is that, you know, for a long time, my goal was to play against the best players every day and really try to become the best player that I could be. And then what I've started realizing recently is that. In some ways, that could be one of the dumbest things I've ever thought about doing because you have <laughs> other games where people come to give you money. One game, they're literally fighting for their life. It's like a fucking battle war. It's like World War Three against some of these players where they're not going to give you anything. You're not giving up a chip at all. Dude. Whereas other players are like, here, take all my money. In fact, I'll show you what I have. I'll go all in. I have nothing. Please make the call. And it sounds uh, like well, you, you, you were focused on those games with the private games, with the celebrities, with the uh, imagine, hedge fund guys. Imagine this for a second, just to, because I think you'll enjoy this. There was one guy that played in the game who uh, he, his, he made all of his money selling fake perfume. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like when you're in New York and like the guy comes out, hey, if you like Chanel number five, you don't have this. And he's like hustling like perfume. That's all him. And he's worth like 300 million or whatever. And he would come to the game and, uh, 
uh, he, he one night he lost like, I don't know, it was like, you know, a hundred grand, over a hundred grand. And he still tipped Molly like $20,000 on the way out after losing a hundred grand. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the kind of money that was flowing in these games. And one time it was, uh, there's a guy, uh, I don't know if you know who Chucky Pacheco is. Uh, he's, uh, plays a lot of poker. Uh, but, uh, he's also a producer, but he was, he got straight over straight and, and Chuck just seemed really disappointed. It was like for a $25,000 pot and Larry, the, the perfume guy, he's like, I'm sorry, Chuck. He's like, you know what? You can have it. And Chuck looked at me. He's like, Houston, Larry just gave me a Prius, <laughs> you know, but these are the kind of guy we had the guy who found sunken treasure. Imagine, imagine your game is so good that the one guy who found the biggest sunken treasure in, in modern history comes to your game, you know, right after Jamie won the world series comes to your game. Mm -hmm. You know, all, we, everyone came to this game mm -hmm. and, uh, it was, it was like, uh, you know, it was, it was, uh, uh, paradise it, it, to use one of your words. Um, it was, it was a great time. It was an amazing, you like that word, there was paradise, no right? paradise, the great way to describe it is a pit. To you know, there was no reason to ever cheat a game like that. The, the, uh, any sure there is. Why not? Why, why would well, they ever catch you? They don't know what's going on. I mean, that, that's the best. That's the easiest game to cheat because they don't know what's happening. I mean, I'm no, saying no, no, no. I understand you're, that you're, you're, you. First you... of all, a guy like a guy like Toby was 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 super sharp, uh -huh. and he never would like he any kind of drugs or shenanigans or hook, none of that shit would ever go down with Toby. What's wrong he, with that? What, what's wrong with those things though? He was super straight when it came to that stuff, uh -huh. and the game was straight. Uh, you know, so why would you fuck with the golden goose it you know that part of my life was already uh -huh. behind me anyway right but the whole thing it, by the way I, I just want to say the whole thing that uh, the, the kid you know put on it on his site he seems like a nice nice kid uh you know uh, i even offered to talk to him before he did the podcast and he didn't want to talk uh but the you know and i can i can only blame myself uh the the last pass of my book um, they had rights to, 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 you know, do editing or whatever. And I didn't even realize it till a few months later. One of the big stories that I told in the book, is this great story about DiCaprio. One night DiCaprio was in the game and I had a meeting, uh, downstairs and it was at the four seasons. And I had a meeting with, um, uh, I don't know if you remember who Fred Durst is. He, he was the limp in the game. Yeah. Okay, so so anyway, uh, I was doing a TV pilot with Fred, and there was a movie that Fred wanted to direct that I owned the, the rights to the script. So we had this quick meeting, and and the game was full, so, but Leo was there hanging out, and uh, and it had been you know a couple of years since it had been like a year since Leo had played. In the beginning, we got Leo into to lure in like big fish. Uh, we even staked him, which I I talk about that in the book. Um, but uh, the um, he sits on my chips. I come up like 20 minutes later and I had 200,000 in front of me and the money's gone. The money's gone. And you know, anytime you lose 200 grand, it, you know, you want to puke, you know, uh, on the table. Right. And, uh, and I thought he was joking with me because, you know, like a couple of years before the, the him and Toby had fucked with me on a much smaller scale, just played a joke on me, but he sold it. I mean, this is one of the best actors in the world. So like, you know, 30 minutes, I'm on the balcony. He walks out and he's like, dude, I'm really sorry, man. And he's like, I had aces because he only played aces or kings. He was super tight. He, he's like, and Bob crushed me. Bob Safai, who played in the game, who you know from like late night poker. Great, mm -hmm. great guy. And uh, he's like, if it means anything to you, I'll, I'll kick you 10 grand back. And I was like, it's okay, Leo. And I walked in. I'm like, Molly, give me another 100 grand. I sit down. Bob pushes me all the money back. And I write about this story. And I thought it was a story that people would want to hear. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but I also talked about how I kind of got him back on a night where he, he did play and everyone had got up to, to, he had just walked back to the table and, uh, and he was sitting down and everyone else was getting up. And I, I, I just grabbed a, a deck and I fired a bunch of cards around and he sits down on the button, I think, and looks down at two aces and he's like, where'd everybody go? And he had his two aces and, uh, you know, the, the joke was nobody was there to play with him. Mm -hmm. And so they, they take the story out, then they, but they leave the part in about me dealing him aces. And so, you know, it looks like I, I like had a piece of Leo and I'm, and I'm dirty dealing in that game. And, 
you know, on the lives of my children that never happened. You know, it just didn't right, happen. Right, I remember on the podcast, I think Charlie talked about how, right, so so you mentioned earlier the book is like the reference point, and now you're saying the book isn't the reference point for a story that doesn't necessarily maybe paint you in a positive light, right? Which is yeah, un I mean, understandable. I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, know, I know how this mistake, process works, That's right? the mistake about the book that I have to live with, you know, and, and I can get it, you know, if I wanted to, to, to push for a second printing, they agreed to, you know, to, there's a bunch of little, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it was malicious on their part. You got to remember the guy who I, who his name is on the book with me. I, I wrote the book. He, he just wrote the intro, but he was also, it was his label. This is the guy who ran, who broke the story of, you know, LA poker and Molly and the whole thing and, and right. ran the national Enquirer. I mean, he's the tabloid, you know, yeah, I, I researched him. He got, he's, he's, he's got, he's got interesting content. I've been, I've been looking at some of his content. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he broke the Jeff Bezos story. I mean, he's, he's broke some, you know, big stories, but mm -hmm. you know, he's all about the sizzle and the heat. And, um, you know, in that, in that instance, you know, that, that, uh, I would have just rather had the book go the other way and told the story about Leo that I thought was fun. And, uh, it, you know, maybe it, it was more innocent and maybe that, you know, in his mind, that's not going to sell or whatever. But, you know, I can't control that, Joe. Mm -hmm. But but I, but I can sit here and I and I can tell you on everything that I love in, in this in, in my life that there was never any cheating that happened in that game. That part of my life was already done and over with. And none of those guys even knew anything about my past. You know, uh, I, I never even did as much as a card trick in front of them. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess there's other, uh, there's, other stories, but there's, other, just, there's other stories in the book, other games in the book, other situations in the book where you, yeah. you talk about, right? You're in games. You think yeah. they're cheating you. So you say. I did some, I, like I had a regrettable thing that I, I think, I, you know, I wish I wouldn't have done at a blackjack game, you know, uh, uh when in my in my 20s it was just a stupid thing to do and uh so you're saying that you don't you don't do this shit anymore you're saying you you're saying not, you wait you're yeah. saying you wake up now let me you're saying you wake up now you're focused on live at the bike you're focused on on trying to help build and continue to build the legacy of live at the bike that was helped to build up by Dude. by feldman when feldman was grinding 24 7 on the fucking phone strutting through the live at the bike trying to get the games going on and and uh, you know, I know the other owners as well. You know, they're involved in the process too. And and, and obviously and, Wayne, shout out to Wayne. I mean, I know I, Wayne, I, right? You know, Wayne, 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 real nice guy, man. One of the nice guys I know in poker, hardworking guy. You know, super hardworking. Yeah, guy. you know what I'm saying. So I, I feel like uh, you're trying to do right by these guys. Is what you're trying to say, uh, JJ, dude, Wayne, the players and, and let me the game. tell you, let me tell you one other thing. Uh, you know, when after I died on the table and all that stuff, you know, then I ended up back in the hospital two more times. And, you know, I, I was given um, four years to live. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when, when someone tells you that you're dying and you have heart disease and it's over, um, it changes your perspective on a lot of stuff, Joe. And I, I was a guy who, who came to Hollywood when I was 18, went to the Grove School of Music. I wanted to be a musician. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always a card player, too. I had that passion as well. Uh, I, I made, I didn't have a rich uncle. I didn't have anybody that I knew in the right. business. You know, I grinded everything out myself and, and I, I did it. I achieved, you know, this American dream. Right. And then, you know, fuck it all up or lose it or have whatever you want to call it. And then, then I'm told on top of, of losing everything, uh, and being back in, uh, my mother's back bedroom in Illinois, in the 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 small town that I grew up in, in a of uh, the entire house was smaller than my master bedroom, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, and knowing that I'm gonna die, I went into a massive depression, and you know there was something about writing the book. It's like some people say, why did you even talk about that part of it? You could have just written about Molly this and that, and there was something cathartic about it. I just. I didn't know if I was even going to be alive when that book came out, man. And, you know, I started writing it and I started, you know, I was taking the, the, these new meds and I had this doctor, I was literally using a, uh, you know, I've never talked about this before, but I was using a, uh, kind of public aid health insurance or whatever. 
and the, this doctor, you know, in my small town, it's like we weren't known for having good doctors, but I got really lucky. This guy would drive in from St. Louis uh, and um, like a year I'd written the book and I was just finishing it up. I had noticed I just started feeling better. Like I couldn't take the um, the medicine that was the really good stuff because the insurance wouldn't pay for it. It's even embarrassing talking about this, considering I was driving around in $200,000 cars. I don't, I mean, I don't, cars, I don't right? think so. There's a lot of people that go through these things, right? I mean, this, well, is, this is normal life. You know, I, I got a people call. Go up and down I, got, I appreciate that. I, I get a call one day from the nurse and you know, people know me in my in my hometown. And 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 this one was in tears. And, and I thought, oh, shit, this is not good. And uh, she said, she said, you need to, you know, no, you need to come down. It's, it's not bad news. And I went to see the doctor and he said, you know, well, I don't know how, you, how to tell you this, but it, it looks like we beat it. I said, what are you talking about? And my heart had gone from uh, being at uh, uh, like 12% function to back to being like a normal functioning heart. And, you know, I think I wrote the book in that time. You know, and this uh, when you start doing YouTube videos, you make a lot of videos on on uh, on your YouTube channel where you're kind of breaking things down. I've seen you do a lot of interviews with people. You know, I've seen you go on other Advantage Play podcasts and talk about talk about gambling with the edge and finding the edge. And apparently, there's a whole Advantage Player community, and they were very fired up that I grouped cheating with Advantage Play. Shout out to all my friends who are Advantage players who were texting me and I got invited on a podcast to discuss this kind of, I got, listen, I put that tweet out. I got a lot of, I got a lot. Well, of, hey, but, if, but, you, if you want to, if you want to get in with the, the, the biggest advantage players in the world, the, the, my new book, uh, I'm uh -oh. doing it right this time. My new book, million dollar mechanics, which is a treatise on modern day poker protection. You should have paid me. We should have paid. We should, I didn't know. We, we like, it's like a promotion. We should have got a, we should have got a, we should have got a compensation deal for this promotion for the book. <laughs> it's it's not even out yet, but I'm, but I'm who it's coming kidding. it's coming out through um, it's coming out through uh, Huntington Press uh -oh. and Anthony Curtis, who's no relation. Uh, you know, I would say uh, Anthony's one of the most respected guys in the gaming industry, uh, and you know, if there's a if there was ever a character witness that that I would call on, uh, it, it would be a guy like that. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going down to the Blackjack Hall of Fame, one of the greatest advantage players in the history of the game. So wh where, where does the advantage you know? play stop and the cheating begins? That's what I'm wondering, it, right? Because some it, people consider, like when I hear some of the advantage plays, I'm like, oh, that, I mean, you know, it, it sounds, it sounds well, out of line, right? I'm not saying I'm the arbiter on what these things are, you one, know, like I, I, either way, you know, everyone's got their own approach, their own strategies, but where does the, where right. do you draw the, where does the advantage play here? We'll put it this way. The, 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 let me ask you, here's, here's a way to look at it. With it. Most of the advantage players don't like, they don't like it when you, when you point this out. I agree. And, I, and, I and Anthony would probably be like, yeah, you got a point because he's just so honest. But uh, like the, they, the, the team plays the big thing, you know, the, you got the spotter and you got, you got this, their whole little team. Well, imagine you put a team of, of super sharp poker players together at one table. Now, what, what do you consider that? I think we call that collusion. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? True. So, so, so the advantage players who do that, it's the same thing. It's just, they're taking down the house and everyone hates the house. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so is it, so if cheating? you're taking down the player, it, 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 it's, it's cheating. If you're taking down the house, it's, we're going to celebrate in the parking lot. We're going to slap hands and, <laughs> right. and grab a nice steak dinner at the golden steer after we go clean. Cause that's my impression of it. Right. We go to the casino, yeah. we go to the slot yeah. machine. Da, 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 da. Oh, winner. There's a bonus da, 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 plus EV. Hey, you want to, you want to take my play? You want to take a piece of my big play? I got a big act. I got a big win. Da, 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 win. I'm a fucking advantage play God, right? That's sort of my impression <laughs> of the advantage play casino players who, who are the hunting for the slots, which I, I did get to see a little bit. That's pretty interesting stuff. And then I guess you got the blackjack and then there's other games potentially I'm sure they're involved in. And now when we're talking about with players in a home game, then that would be not advantage play. But I think other people might consider that advantage play. They might consider that these guys are fucking stupid and they came into my game and now they're going to lose their money to me. Dude, I've walked into games where I, it's like, uh, it's like, I know I, there was, when I was done with Molly's game, like when, you know, the world kind of collapsed, uh -huh. I still went and I played in some, some games and I got invited to play in some games from guys that I played with years ago where, you know, I, I knew there might be the potential for shenanigans and I spotted some. Um, but 
I, I will admit at one, one point I had the guy, I needed the money and uh, the guy paid me $3,000 to come play in the game. Mm-hmm. Win or lose. Mm-hmm. And I won $30,000. I walk out and I get, you know, I keep my 3000 He gets the rest. And he had about four or five guys just like me in there. And they were, you know, he was taking down two big marks, you know, and, uh, you know, you would know these names, you know, uh, and it was not cheating them, just, you know, how, how are they going to, right? you know, how are they right. going to win? You know, I mean, well, so, so you mentioned, you mentioned earlier, right? How to protect their own money. Well, I'll how do you, how do you protect yourself from this? Right. Cause as you mentioned earlier, right. So we got the Houston situation that goes down. And by the way, there was one good question, which is about, uh, discuss how the, how they got around the problem with the deck being cut to stay. Cause that's what a lot of people said after the shuffle machine does its thing, right. the dealer cuts the cards. Well, I- anyone should know that's why he had to do the algorithm, Joe. So when, 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 when that is done, the, the machine knows the order of the entire deck. Now you cut the deck, right? And as soon as the, the mark gets this card, uh-huh. it still knows that order. So he puts the algorithm in, you know, the cut, all it does is halves the deck. Right. So the order does not change at that point. The order stays the same other than it's cut. You know, it's very simple. So um, it doesn't matter. Even if it's cut, it won't, it won't make a difference. So yeah, what do you got to do? I mean, you got to write, do you got to like rifle the cards? You got to spread them out. All I you mean, have it- to do. And, and by the way, I am, uh, I think everyone should do this. I think every casino should do this. Okay. We we have started uh, doing this at Live at the Bike. Okay. Um, not because there's a, a shuffle master issue, because there isn't. But 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 Uh-oh. but just to an extra level of production. It comes out of the shuffle master before you hit the cut card. You just do one riffle. That's it. Then you cut, and you could have. The whole mob there ready to take your money, and uh, as soon as you start uh, making them riffle when it comes out of the shuffle master, that scam is over. Mm-hmm. Okay, then they got to move on to something else. Right now, there is other things. Oh, uh, it's not used as much today where they they tamper with the cards. Okay, but uh, and and the way that that worked is they when they got done they would have to, the the dealer would let the deck sit on top of that cut card like too long before he picked it up just for a few seconds because there was basically a reader that was rereading the order as it sat there on the cut card when they're done with the shuffling procedure uh-huh. you know so um, so so basically right so what you're saying you mentioned earlier yeah you think that live at the bike is the most secure poker stream that currently 100%. is running and I know some other people would take uh, would take a, a you know offense to that, or they would disagree with that. So, what exactly yeah. is it about what you've learned? So now we've talked about your your past, right? We talked about the history. Mm-hmm. And by the way, there actually is some interesting Haralabob said on Twitter, where Haralabob allegedly says he I played in one of his cheated games. I was pretty sure it was being cheated. I just hung around to try it out. Haralabob, friend of the podcast, longtime member of the Pope community, very respected member. Yeah, of the ask community, ask Haralabus. Right? Who told them that he was being cheated? He'll right, tell he you said it was, with, it was with Mark Deck. They brought a deck out. Allegedly, it was sealed. They, they brought it, in, but I didn't know. I didn't know this was happening. And he said it was I in your game too, it. right? He said this was in your game. Yeah, well, I also got clobbered in the game because it, one of the classic moves in you with these kind of uh, hustlers, and this is by the way, is after Molly's game was done, and you know I needed money. It was the same guy that paid me the three grand to, to come play in his game. Uh, it was the same guy. I was at uh, first, I, I was partners with him on a few games and um, you know, it, it, you gotta be careful talking about some of these guys. Cause they're, they're it's not like they're um, yeah, no, I, I understand. Uh, I mean, you I know I, what I mean? Yeah, I understand. Uh, but, but uh, I was playing uh, the, there was, a, there was a kid who uh, he had played like a year before he came into our game. He did play once with me and Toby and Toby and I chopped him up all night once. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, I think he was like some kind of an online player though. And, and he came, he came back uh, to this game as an invite. And basically the reason the guy partnered with me is he knew I could bring in big players, right? Which I did. I brought in some yeah. big players to this game and he brought in some players and, but we're playing in the game too. And I was getting chopped up and uh, like this guy made like this hero call against me. I couldn't figure it out. 
then all of a sudden Horalibus was invited and they're playing like 250 K head up matches. And I was just watching it and, um, Horalibus kept losing. And the only way I knew for sure, I had a suspicion there might be a luminous reader deck because of the glasses this guy was wearing. Um, hmm. and, what is that? Can you clarify what that means? What does that mean? A yeah, lum- a it's like a, it's a, they call it a juice deck. It's where they, um, it's kind of like an invisible ink on the back of the card. Uh-huh. And if you have the right lenses, you can use contact lenses or glasses. You can see like a great big seven, you know, seven hearts, you know, you know, on the, on the friggin' card. And, um, and I, I kept thinking, you know, th- this has to be, you know, something was, something just didn't feel right. It was months later that, um, I, I'm hesitant to say this, but it was months later that I, I don't want to say who told me, but someone did t- tell me that, uh, unbeknownst to me, the dealer was asked to switch out all the decks at the beginning of the night. And the, the, the guy who was dealing, I know, always brought brand new decks. You know, it'd be brand new, uh, you know, Kim, Kim, Kim decks. Uh, but he was asked to use different decks. And, you know, this kind of stuff um, happens. Uh, again, I had nothing to do with, with it. I, I'm the one who told her all of us about that. Maybe he's forgotten. So yeah. I, I I hope he. So you're uh, saying her all about was in the game. They brought in the juice deck. The deck, the guy had the infrared. Allegedly, who maybe maybe not. It is all okay. allegedly because I don't have sure. proof of it. But sure. I believe that that's what happened. And I told him I believe that's what what happened. Once I had once I was told what happened with the deck switching. Because why would you switch the decks? Mm-hmm. I already suspected it. Something didn't seem right. Then you found out that the decks got switched. You know, it doesn't Damn. get a rocket so you got, Do you have no, are glasses allowed on live at the bike? Because it sounds, it sounds to me like we got to get the shuffler machine out of there. There got to be like a SWAT team shuffling the cards. They deal it. There's, Dude, there's, I, there's metal I, things around. I mean, listen, let, no, I'm serious. Let, let, let's think, think about there's this, other right? games that need a, a little more, that should be way more worried about. <laughs> well, I'm not, <laughs> I, I, and, me, and, and we going to, listen, I'm only one fucking man. Okay. I got, I got the, I got this massage lady. They just fired the massage lady. You see her? She was rubbing the guy's nipples at the World Series of Poker. <laughs> they fired the lady. I'm talking to the lady now. I'm like, why are we firing this lady for giving the nipple massage at the table? Listen, there's a lot of shit going on, Houston, okay? <laughs> like, I'm worried about my poker career. We got the damn crypto market out there. We got NFTs. I gotta do I gotta do commentary for a high stakes game. I gotta brush up on my Nolan and hold him. I'm playing Potlum and Omaha night. I'm a one man I'm one <laughs> man on the on the I'm like a man in the jungle running through the fucking trees here, Houston. I'm trying to keep up. We got H Town, Dirty John on there, fucking chirping at me, talking about how he, we we're gonna make a vlog when it comes to Vegas. We're gonna go play. That's not. I'm excited about meeting that guy. That's the guy I want to meet. That guy seemed like a crazy. Who, who, guy. Which guy is that? He is one of the uh, f- owners of the the video I made the last video on. He's one of the owners of the casino. H Town, H Town, Dirty John on Twitter. Shout out to H Town, Dirty John. That guy seems like one crazy guy i gotta say i really i'm looking forward to, to talking with that guy more look, but look our game man the one thing the one thing we do is first thing we collect all the phones okay you know, put no them in phones. a locked box love so there's that no phones but not only at the game okay that we collect all of the phones in the control room no one in the control room is allowed to be on social media or have any type of wireless feed out of the control room okay okay we have security cameras from the casino in the control room so security is watching we have a security guard outside of the control room Mm -hmm. all right the decks and this is a big point because i could name other shows that aren't doing this i could go farther than that like who? that's not what i'm here to do i want the whole industry i'd love to know you you and i have one thing in common we love this industry we want the industry to do well right Mm -hmm. if one stream does some dirty shit, it's bad for everybody right uh what you brought out about um, about uh, Postal, it whipped a lot of people into shape, bro. It did a lot of good, I'm sure. I, I'm sure it did a lot of good. But I know the one stream that was always on the up and up, and any time they even sniffed of anything wrong, they jumped on it. And that was the Live at the Bike team. And that has not changed. It's only gotten more harsh and more strict. You know, it, it makes it hard to, you know, to, to operate sometimes, but... To be to be to, to be to be fair, I, I mean, I'm gonna disagree, right? Because I, 
was live at the bike plenty of times. And I'm telling you right now, it was a real easy thing. To, if you really wanted to do something, you could have done it because there was no system in place to, to where they're putting the cards. You're talking about when Ryan was, was working correct. there or back in the day? Correct, correct. Before yeah. Mike, the Mike Postle situation happened, right? You're in there. Everyone's got phones. There ain't no security. You, There's one you, security guard here. Like, the security guard ain't got... Well, the security guy ain't looking at anything. He's looking around, you know, oh, oh, you know, what, does, what is the security guard? What's the, what's this guy? You know what I'm saying? Come on, let's be real for a second. Okay. No, they, they, so, they, but that's... I'm saying that it's real easy. If I'm, if I'm looking at the cards to send a, send a message, right? Like, Hey, whenever, whenever I really want to, I'm just saying, this is easy. Well, the like, this, guy, we they, can't they, pretend they can't it's not in. easy. You know what I'm saying? By the way, the, the, even, even the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, so I'm getting fired up now. Sorry, the stream and no, get fired up. Get, even getting the stream up. itself. No one in the room, no one in the room uh -huh. can see the whole cards in the control room mm -hmm. except the director. There is a small screen right in front of him that has a a glare protector over it, so you cannot see from any angle except sitting right in front of it. Mm -hmm. That was done on purpose for security measures, right? right? So, so you're, you're, also, protect, you're protecting these players, right? So you're, you're taking absolutely. new precautions, you're getting rid of phones, you're trying yeah. to up the security level, you're limiting the people that have access. Cause that, that I mean, once again, right, I'm asking this question because you said that you think that Live at the Bike has the best security as of right now, right? You're someone who's got this experience, you've got a certain set of skills as we've already been discussing now. And what you're saying is that you wanna use your skills, your ability, your knowledge to be able to create a show that does provide this, 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 this provides this level of security, right? This level of safety, this Sincerely level of comfort for the players in a time when, to me, I, I mean, some other players don't give a fuck, right? They just want to play a good poker game and they'll take yeah, a chance. they'd be like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They don't. I know, I know, a lot of these guys don't care, right? I mean, like, they would be <laughs> some of them like getting their phone out of their hand. It's like right a big pain in the ass for them. But you know what? They've they're coming around. I mean, the first thing we. Uh, First, we had a model walk around with the, with the box. It makes it easier to put your phone in this box, you right. know. But now we're just like stick the phone in the box, guys. Okay. You know. Um, but I mean, yeah, I, I agree. Like last cards. night, last night we're playing at the table. Like everyone got a phone out. I mean, I mean, listen. I think all these phones should be away from these tables. It don't make much well, sense to me, right? Like why? You know, the guys who are the big vlogger guys who you know now you in in this is what's interesting. The 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 level of. Uh, security in an, uh, a live stream has raised the bar for the entire poker industry. No one, no other poker game has this level of security that we, that we have at live at the bike. So everyone has their phones out and they're shooting their own, you know, vlogs at the table. Uh, but hmm. they also don't have access to whole cards. Right. Uh, True. But, but, but what we, we know now is that there can be compromises that, you know, it, Look, compromising one of these shovel masters, I'm not saying that it's that it's not been done in Las Vegas, but it is way more difficult, you know, uh, to 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 get one of these things compromised from in a licensed casino. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still a little bit of the Wild West out there in Texas right now. And, uh, you know, these guys who, you know, do this for a living, they're going to hit up those places first and they're going to, you know, shuffle master comes in once a month to like part of the contract is they calibrate the machine. So these guys will hit in after they come in, they know the schedule they've paid off. They found some dude who makes like 40 grand a year. And they're like, how would you like to make 40 grand in, you know, a few weekends, you know, Makes sense, and, yeah. uh, and all they got to do is find one guy who will say yes. And by the way, they usually have some dirt on the guy too. And know you know, he's having an affair, he's doing this, or he needs money for a drug problem, whatever it is, they'll find the right guy. And, and uh, that's why, you know, staff is so important. And that's, that's what it separates the men from the boys, you know, in, in Vegas, it, when they staff their floor man positions and all that, you know, the kind of background checks they make these guys go through these days and the, the kind of software they're using and the technology they're using is so much more sophisticated. So when you're in a run and gun place, you know, like as cool as it, as it is, you know, uh, in Texas, um, look, they're taking advantage of, of a loophole uh, while they can, because in three years, they're going to have, they're probably going to have brick and mortar casinos in there and all these card rooms are going to go away, you mm -hmm. know, or, or, or they're going to, you know, the strong will survive and, you know, there'll be a few left maybe. Right. Uh, so everyone's like racing to make as much dough as they can. And it's not the owners who are doing this. Owners never have these incentives to, to, you know, cheat the players. 
it's it's guys who who are just seeing a a mark and trying to take it down and the easiest mark in town is someplace that is not regulated and it doesn't have the right oversight and i can tell you that is not the case at live at the bike one, one thing you know in my book i'm doing a whole chapter it'll be the first chapter ever written on live stream poker protection mm -hmm. and one thing that i will tell everyone out there if you're not doing it the casino Someone at the casino, this is hard to do, you know, with Texas because the way it's structured, but the production should never control the cards. I've heard of some productions where the producer's taking the cards home. That is like a giant red flag. Mm. You know, the casino brings you the cards, the casino takes the cards. The only time that, that the cards are ever touched is by the dealer who is hired by the casino. Okay. Production has no business touching the cards. Uh, in, in unless you're dealing with a bad RFID card or, you know, uh, or you're, you're calibrating cards. And when that happens, a casino executive needs to, uh, we make sure a casino executive is right there with uh, someone who is calibrating cards, you mm -hmm. know, and this kind of oversight is, is how you keep these games safe. Makes sense. So do you feel like that's not happening? I mean, obviously Hustler Casino Live, you know, those are, they're a big uh, competitor of you guys, right? I mean, I think we, 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 it's clear they're coming to take over LA poker. You know, LA, I mean, let's kind of get into that, right? So Live at the Bike, right? So Feldman, very pivotal part of helping to build Live at the Bike into a great operation, right? He helped build up the YouTube channel. He helped build up the games. He helped build up the players. He helped basically take the Live at the Bike format and then bring it to a, uh, I don't know, a modern way of thinking about it. So he gets, well, all, he, gets part, a, uh, he was one part of a, of agree. a team. I, I mean, I followed this the entire time. So my opinion, yeah. right? That's just my opinion. Okay. Other people, of course, were involved. They're behind the scenes. They're working hard too. They're showing up every day. They're fucking grinding. Yes. Not going to take that away from those guys. But to me, when I look at that, that's what I see. Feldman gets ousted from live at the bike for reasons that, you know, I don't know if these are publicly discussed reasons or not. He gets well, ousted from live at the bike. Them? He, what? Are you going to discuss him? I don't know. Maybe you want to discuss him. I don't know. But he he teams up with Nick Fertucci, who was a player on the show. They go ahead and they start the competitor to Live at the Bike, Hustler Casino Live. Then Live at the Bike, those owners decide, hey, you know, we better get out of Live at the Bike because now we got Hustler Casino Live starting. Maybe we want to deal with this bullshit. Maybe we want to try to exit at the top. May want to exit whoever, right? They just want to get away from the thing. It's kind of my impression, right? And, and once again, we'll go back and forth. So that's where, to me, I'm trying to understand, right? So it seems like... No, that you, you're saying they wanted to get out? Well, no, no. It, I, that, is what is, I, that, I mean, maybe oh, they sold the, they no, sold the company. I, I, I recognized uh, an undervalued property. You did, I, right? So you're, yeah, saying that I, you, I, you're saying you came in, you saw Live at the I, Bike. I was, and, yeah, I started talking to Wayne and I just... You know, look, I always liked Live at the Bike and mm -hmm. I just thought... You know, COVID was happening and um, I, there were a lot of things that were getting, you know, bought, you know, for a good price, uh, like that were undervalued. Mm -hmm. And, you know, me and my, my partner, Rick Marr, who I've done a lot of uh, um, productions with over the years, literally known him since kindergarten. You mm -hmm. know, we're lifelong friends, uh, but we, we produced a lot of things together. Um, we both love poker and uh, we were looking at different properties and, and live at the bike made the most sense. So that's how all that started. No one was racing to just to a, leave, a coincidence it, in some ways, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe they're motivated to sell. Maybe, maybe your, your inquiries were received a bit more generously because of the COVID, right? You don't really know what's going to happen with live poker, right? I mean, it makes yeah, I mean, sense, they were right? Still, they were still, you know, coming off of the COVID. It was like, is the thing even going to survive? And I'd seen that they kept it alive through this, you know, yeah. hell storm, you know? And, and by the way, the guys who kept it alive is the, is the you know, uh, I know you're, you're, you're friends with Ryan, but the guys who kept that thing alive during the most difficult time are the guys who are there now, you know, through all the hell. Mm -hmm. You know, they Shout kept Wayne. it going. Right. Wayne, Brian, I mean, and, and Matt and, you know, and, uh, you know, and I didn't know about a lot of the history, you know, and I, and I, and I feel like, um, you probably know more than, than, than you've decided you, you want to talk about. And, and it's nothing I really care to talk about either. Mm -hmm. Uh, because what I said before, I really mean, I, I, I want Hustler to do well, you know, uh, I, I don't have 
I know there may be beef between, you know, some of, some of these guys. I don't have any personal beef with anyone. Mm-hmm. I hear Ryan's a nice guy, you know, uh, I'm sure that's true. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they pulled off a great thing when they, they got Mr. Beast, you know, uh, and, and I give him credit for that. Um, we have bigger aspirations, you know, that, uh, that aren't just, it's not just about being just the king of LA poker. You want to expand outside of that. So your, your sort of vision when you see this, right, because you've got the many years experience you've worked with. I mean, it seems like you've honestly probably worked with a lot of different corporations, a lot of different media entities. You obviously Brian know, Conlon, you yeah, know, yeah. a lot of people who've done very successful in the production, the directing and the investing and probably every facet of these things. So what you're saying is you see, which I, 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 I would actually agree with you, right? You see live at the bike as a asset that has a lot of value now due to its catalog, due to its brand, due to its yes. location. Subscribers. I mean, right. You know, and more has subscribers of- than World Poker Tour, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, yeah. So, so it, it's part of, it's, it's a, it's an, a great part of a bigger whole, Joe, uh, that, that I think is going to be, you know, really exciting for poker as, as we expand. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, I, you know, I don't think if I said this to my guys or if I said this to, uh, you know, the guys over at, over at Hustler, it, it, whatever their past is, you know, I don't know if it's they, they, they can work through it or not. But, uh, you know, the, the, the best thing to do in some of these cases is is to, uh, you know, sometimes working together uh, is better uh, for, for poker, you know, than right. making everything like uh, like an all out war. Like, you know, if I have to go to war. Bro, I'll go to war, but 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 I'm fighting on a different battlefield, you know. Right, uh, uh, right now, we're we're you know we had to come back from a a big long hiatus, and then we had a you know a, we had a, a a rocky you know uh, start, but but now our momentum's picking up, you know, and uh, I agree. and you know, and we're feeling really good about uh, about the show and and about the future of uh, uh, you know and the things that we're going to do and the way we're going to expand it. And, uh, you know, I, this is, this is another reason why, you know, you know, having, uh, uh, Joe Ingram, uh, out there saying, you know, it, this is, you say it's self-serving or whatever, maybe it is, but you, you're, you're definitely the kind of guy that, uh, you know, I want, uh, walking away from, you know, you know, this interview, uh, to say, you know what? Yeah. I liked live at the bike in the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and and after talking to Houston, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't like Live at the Bike now. Mm-hmm. There is no shenanigans going on at Live at the Bike. It would be the worst thing in the world for my career uh, to to even allow someone to penetrate that game. So I'm doing the exact opposite. I'm being like a hyper vigilant about making sure it is impenetrable. Right. You know, and 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 I say that with a grain of salt because the 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 thing that our industry has to worry about most, Joe, in terms of uh, of live stream poker. Uh, and, and I'm looking into some companies to, uh, you know, um, put it to the test. It's not, it's not what happens on the inside. It, it's, it's what could, it's the possibility of what could happen on the outside. If someone could somehow penetrate that RFID software from the outside in some type of a hack, that would be the worst thing that could happen to this industry because almost everybody uses the same software. You know what I mean? So that would be bad. We right. don't want that. So I'm looking into ways to find, uh, you know, uh, even higher levels of encryption um, that would uh, uh, safeguard from that. And what would I do if I found if I if I crack that nut? I would share it with everyone because that is what's good for 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 poker, right? So, I, so, so it sounds like your goal is to. I mean, and this is why this conversation is important, right? You know, I mean, some people out there. I, I've been a little aggressive. I, I would agree. I'm fired up. I've been night. I've been. I've been like as I told you before. I had a. Well, you didn't tell the audience what happened last night either, so. True, yeah, it wasn't a good, wasn't, it, I mean, either way, <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. No, I did, I did tell my Instagram story. Listen, it's on, it's on my IG story, Poppy GTO, oh, okay. right. and I did go over my session, right? So listen, it's some, some sessions you win, some sessions you lose, right? It is what it is. So when you got a losing session, sometimes you're fired up, you're a little bit, you know what I mean? I had a, yeah, we had a, like, we had oh, a good shit, meeting this, great. I had a good meeting today. I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, listen, I'm excited to, to chat with you about it. You know what I'm saying? I, I try to treat everybody I have on the show with respect no matter whatever they're oh, accused of alleged that, right you know in the situation i think you're you think you're you've been through a lot i feel like you can handle it right i wouldn't i wouldn't be pressing you a little bit on this and that's why you came you came on here right you came on here because you said hey you know i know that 
that there's going to be some questions about myself. I yeah. know there's going to be some questions about my past. I know there's going to be some questions about what I've written in the book. And uh, eventually I got to answer these fucking questions, right? I got to step up there and say, hey, here's what I've done. Here's what I allegedly didn't do, right? And I mean, some of the stories you said, right? You know, I don't know. I'm not going to say that I'm... It sounds like a lot of answers you've given me. You said, oh, you know, I, I didn't I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything. Why? Now, what about at the bike? What if you don't see anything, right? Because it don't seem like you're around. It seems like you're around a massive cheaters. When you say I didn't see anything, what are you talking? That's about? you said, Russ Hamilton. You go, you know, I, I, I didn't, I didn't know what was happening, right? You said Haralabob, well, Haralabob, but, Haralabob but I got the juice deck. You didn't my, see it was happening. Well, what if my I lack the bike? Of knowledge. You know, on, what if you don't uh, see it happening too? Have you got? I mean, the that's, online, the online aspect. You know, I, I ran the TV show. I wasn't a part of the online company. Just to be clear, mm -hmm. the TV show was, was you know. Uh, very well ran. And uh, what TV show are you referring to? The Ultimate Blackjack Tour, okay. which is when I worked with Hamilton. That was cool. I had that, that was, nothing that was pretty, to do. Pretty, pretty, pretty fun show. Yeah, a nice set, nice production, look good, the, different. They had the entrance, they're coming out. Mike Posse was on bet. that show too. Yeah, I, that, that we saw him on that show as well. By the way, we're gonna be we're gonna be having something. Uh, you remember the Secret Bet? No. It, it, so so. You know that what was cool about uh, elimination blackjack for those who don't know is it was it was uh like 32 hands there was a forced elimination whoever was the short stack on hand eight hand 16 hand 24 it was like survivor they're automatically eliminated one time throughout the tournament you would get to go into this booth and make a secret bet so when you came back no one knew what your bet was mm -hmm. well um you can't do a secret bet at, at a poker table obviously but you can't do something with the booth Good. and uh, there may be because uh, in the booth, they would talk, they would make confessions, they would do this and that. So we do have something. Uh, fun so you got, you got to basically, I mean, I think we can agree that the state of live stream poker has been pretty stagnant for a long time. Right. I mean, now you see a lot of carbon copies, right? They put the guys around the table. They play the show. They post the clickbait highlight on YouTube. Shout out to clickbait. You know, big fucking pot, 700. Right, I mean, right. everyone, they're using the Doug Polk 2016 strategy. Everyone just adopted right, it. Right. You know, there ain't, there ain't much originality in terms of what's happening no, I, with, yeah. the, with the content. Yeah, we're trying to reimagine it a little. And and by the way, when you do that, when you take those chances, they're, not all of them are going to work. Agree. And, and we can <laughs> right. I, I agree. And let's talk about the production lab at the bike. So people have voiced their disapproval. I personally, right, I don't think it's as bad as some of other people are saying. They say it's too dark that's like surrounded by screen. It's kind of like you're in a spaceship. And when I'm talking, I mean, I'm talking to a lot of people out here at the World yeah, Series yeah. and they're saying there it's dark. I, I see, I can understand the vision. I see what's going on. I feel like it, it, over it's a first, tuning. plus you just started, right? Like you guys are getting used to it. You're going to learn what works. You're going to learn what you don't like. It's only going to get better. It's literally like the first Thank fucking you. month you guys started. Yeah, so, and by the way, one of the things, the, the vision with the player is, we're actually, for the first time today, we're doing, like we want to have, um, like yo virals on the show today. Mm -hmm. We we put this uh, video together that th these these screens. There's twelve of them. Then there's three up top. Uh, the idea is we have a custom player that's still being made. It's not finished. So, you know, the full story is we've been kind of working with like one leg broke, right? Because uh, we can only control four screens at a time. So whatever goes on four screens goes on another four and another four. Well, imagine one video on all 12 at once. It'll literally look like you're floating through space. But then you can you can customize those and put um, player profiles up and player videos. Like when a player, you know, say Yo Viral says, hey, I want to order shots for the table. All of a sudden, a Yo Viral video will start playing. You know, you've seen some things where the shark comes out or where the time clock goes up or with the all in, the money, the cash falls down. You know, it's, 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 fine tuning those things uh finding out what people the great thing about our business and you know this better than anybody is you can go on and you can look at the numbers you can look at you know what people are saying you find out what they like what they don't like and then as you make these incremental improvements you start seeing hey you know i really like what you did there or mm -hmm. you know exactly. and, and you just got to listen you know 100%. to the audience and uh uh, and I think the the new form of media gives us a much better way of listening to an audience than we've had in the past. So yeah, especially I'm excited at, especially at scale, right? I mean, you have the comment section, you have the people yeah. who voice their approval. I mean, listen, the people on poker live streams are loud people, and they're going to let you know if they don't fucking like something. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah they they they're not shy. I mean, they're not I've shy. Been dealing, I've been dealing with these guys for about you know 13 years, and, and I want to go back to what I said about the live stream, right? Just because they've been. 
people have been doing it. it that that's what works. People want to see poker, right? So at the end of the day, they want to see poker being played. They don't. Sometimes they don't care where it's at. They want to see people they know. They want to see big, big hands being played. And you know the formula is quite simple. It seems to be yeah. working. It's only getting bigger and bigger. The vloggers. What's your thought are, on stakes? The what? Do you how, how important do you think high stakes are for live stream? Uh, do you, better question. Do you think there is a way? to do a low stream, a low stakes game that people will want to watch. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I think that depends on who it is, depending on where it's distributed, depending on how it's marketed, depending on what kind of stories or other elements you build around the show. If you just go, Hey, I'm going to do Wednesday, a two five stream. And you don't know who the fuck the people and you are just bring in the table from the, <laughs> from the bottom section. Exactly. Yeah, right. Like that, that, that ain't going to work. <laughs> now, if you build up a story and if you build right. up the characters and you bring in people that people might know. I mean, we've seen this with the content creators. They put on their own poker game on a one, two game on poker now. Right. And then there's a bunch of people watching it. So now we so know we, people we watch experiment. it depending on who distributes the content. Yeah. We want to experiment with things like that too, because I, I think there's so much that hasn't uh, been uh, tapped into yet, Joe. And, and, you know, Rick and I, our, our goal is to, uh, you know, get it well oiled again and polished and moving, but then it's, you know, a b i always be innovating if we stop innovating you yeah, know okay i like that it's I'd over that a b i always be innovating okay always write that down what if it ain't broke you gotta you know what if you what if it ain't broke don't fix it well there's the parts that you figure out the parts that aren't broke and uh and you keep them there's All always right. something that could be improved upon and we're we, we're in such a unique spot with uh you know uh, this form of media because you know, you can go out and do little tests. You know, you don't want to like, yeah, we had to make our one big change, but really it was it was fixing all the things that weren't really ready for launch and three, four lights went out the night before and the audio was fucked and all that. But, but you know, you, now now we're at this place where we can really start dialing it in. And then you, you make one little change, add mm -hmm. one little thing, test it. You know, it's kind of like direct response marketing. You know, when you, you don't want to change the entire campaign at once because then you won't know what, Right, right, right. Do. Exactly. Yeah. You have to yeah. incrementally test things. And, and, you know, that's why it can't all happen overnight, but you just get one thing right and you add another and another, and then you try something, you know, totally new and different. Look, I miss, I miss seeing, um, tournaments, you know, I was kind of a product of the, you know, the rise of tournament poker. And, you know, I was younger, uh, you know, guy then and, and, uh, like I was the young, I was the the young kid, you know, the, not the young kid, but you know, compared to how I feel now, uh, and it was so exciting, you know, when when uh, uh, the whole card cameras first came out, and 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 the way the turn. I think there's going to be a new way to approach tournaments that hasn't been thought of. I think there's a way to approach tournaments. Uh, imagine approaching some type of a tournament based on some type of uh, VPIP. Mm -hmm in a cash format mm -hmm. i mean there's there's out of the box things that could uh that could be done that you know maybe we're not we're not uh doing yet and we want to you know try and uh, uh keep pushing it forward makes sense yeah yeah i mean you know? okay I like you want that. me to I mean, show uh, anybody how to protect themselves? From that's that's what we're getting into right now. So let's let's <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's show some some how to protect ourselves from from some out of line activity or whatever ideas you got. Let's see what what, what do right. you got in mind? Because I know people all in right, chat well, obviously they want to know about that too. I want to know about that as well. All right. Well, first the we'll go back to lock, like lock the, in uh, guys. Lock in chat. <laughs> lock in. We'll go back to the basics. The one thing you don't want to do is uh, if you're playing for any considerable stakes. Uh, you know, there are still tons of, of home games uh, around the country that where everyone's passing the deal and doing over overhand shuffles, right? And the overhand shuffle is, uh, you know, it's an, it's an easy way to uh, stack cards, right? Uh -oh. So let's see. Yeah, there we go. All right, so there's one stacked. Okay, so that's that's called an overhand run up, right? And so just eliminate overhand shuffling, right? Okay. Uh, so how, how should people be shuffling when when they're in home games or or anything like that? All right. So the the standard shuffle is in the, this was invented for a reason uh, because it's very hard to beat, and it's riffle, 
riffle. Okay, then it then it's box. Just a, a simple box cut, mm -hmm. and then riffle. All right. Now here's the thing. That can still be beaten. <laughs> okay. That can still be beaten. <laughs> All right. So so you you want to make sure. What the fuck was that, bro? You want to make You're sure kidding that, me. Oh my god! Company. This guy wants to. This guy wants to play. I'm not going, man. <laughs> Shit. Okay. What do we do now? So do do? so so. But there, there's <laughs> ways to get past that. What the fuck is going on here? I I I'm puppy. <laughs> so the. No, I'm kidding. Let's say. So I mean, imagine you sick. know just to represent like a, a wash when when aces go into a deck just to show you uh, how someone can manipulate cards. Yeah, these are truly oh, random. Oh, God, no. What are you going to do now? This is, it's truly random. All right. I'm going to ask you what. Oh, no. Uh, Come I'm going to ask you what you want. Look, I'm going to shuffle these up. Okay. Okay. All right. And uh, what hand would you like? <laughs> oh, my. What are you talking about? What hand would I like? What are you talking about? What, what, what hand would you like me to, uh, to deal these aces to? Uh, I'd like you to deal aces to the, the, my, my young friend, Poker Bunny. Poker Bunny's in the sixth seat. Can you deal aces to Poker Bunny in the sixth seat? P Poker Bunny's in the sixth Poker seat? Poker Bunny's in the sixth seat, yeah. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll just put Poker Bunny here. One, okay. two, three, four, five, six. One, two. See how we did. Oh, we got, we got three out of, we got three out of four. All right. Well, I'm a little, my hands are cold. Uh, but that'll usually get the money, right? Would three out of four get the money? Probably. But now, you know, one big thing that you can do. So wait to, a second. You riffled the cards, and you told us earlier if they riffle the cards, and this should be okay. It should be a little bit better. It, 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 but there's one thing that's left out. Every okay. single part has to be. If you don't do one thing, uh, it screws up the entire process. Like okay. for instance, if you're riffling, uh, and when you go to do the uh, that final cut if you keep your hand on the deck uh that could mean like let me show you let's look so i got these aces here and i'm gonna i got say I, I i call them to the bottom all right now i'm doing what's called a short shuffle i'm keeping them on the bottom all right now i'm i'm riffling again and and i'm keeping a break behind there and then i keep them on the bottom again all right uh, and, and now say I, I go to do the cut, all right? And I, I do the cut, all right? But they're still on the bottom. I've kept them on the bottom even with the cut uh -huh. because I didn't do a true cut. And that cut that you'll see guys do, they'll, they'll take both hands and lift up the deck and do the cut. You need to put the cut card out there. Okay. He has to take his hands completely off of the deck, all right, and do the cut. So now these aces, now they're going into the center. Now, the problem with oh, this no. is, don't here's do the it. problem. Don't do it. They're... No, don't tell me you can do it again. Yeah, I just dealt oh those Oh, my God. The what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> All right. Those are dealt from the center of the deck. Okay. Uh, but I can teach people how to spot the way the hands look and the way the, the deck is held and certain things that are being done. Uh, I got a call, Joe. Uh, it's been a couple of years ago now, um, and I, I studied some tape for six weeks, and uh, these guys were sure that this dude in, it was like seat nine or whatever um, on the tape that I watched. Uh, actually, I've watched different tape, but uh, there's three three sessions where he, he somehow wound up right next to the dealer, and I, kn I knew why when I figured out what they were doing. But now imagine this. I'm going to show you. Uh, now, also, I what you didn't see, you didn't see me scramble the cards. Right. Okay. Uh, that will that will help a true scramble, and that scramble needs to be face out. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna. This is gonna be a true shuffle. All right. There are gonna be uh, zero cards controlled uh, because the only way you control the cards is if you can somehow call them before the game. You know, or or you do what's called a pickup call or a discard call when people are throwing their cards away you kind of keep track of the order and then they can easily be manipulated. Right. But this is truly shuffled. Okay. I don't know what, what this order is. Oh boy. I, we and go. now we're going to use a cut card. I watched these guys. I studied this tape for, for months 
Now, you just tell me, we're going to just pick two random cards. You just say when. Stop. Okay, so here's here's a random card. Let's do another one. Stop. All right, these are truly random. All right, you got ace three. It could be okay. worse. Not bad hand. All right, so so now you got to remember, this guy is, um, he's over here in uh, seat, you know, uh, uh, whatever, seat, uh, he's, he's next to the dealer. So... I'm watching, I'm watching this go down because they were, they were just looking at the player. They weren't looking at the dealer. They're like, no, oh, the dealer's not doing, not doing anything wrong. So I, I, start, I started watching, and, uh, and I noticed that uh, there were certain things that did seem to happen every time uh, this guy got in a, in a huge, huge pot. All right. So here comes, here's the, the burn, or here, yeah, burn, and here's the flop. All right, now this flop did not hit this guy. Uh huh. <laughs> I mean, you know, you would need uh, not not that I haven't seen guys, uh, you know, even on live at the bike, better flop like this. But you would need you would need running cards, right? Like you would need a, a backdoor trip you know, draw, backdoor straight draw. Yeah, yeah. Like you would need, you know, like a four. A four would help, right? Uh, you know, if you're if you're going for for a wheel, would that uh -huh. <laughs> wait? You you would you would admit that that would help. Uh -huh. Now, if 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 only we could find no uh, a a deuce. No. Now, what you got to hope, what what you got to hope here is that someone oh, else no. you know has has a huge hand. Like you're hoping some guy has a king at this point. And I would I I, I watch these guys and certain things. So certain things would would happen. And these things are happening now, but you don't even you know really understand what they are. But anyway, it's happening. Uh, so we burn and we turn and there's what? the deuce. What? <laughs> now that just happened in front of your eyes in a truly shuffled deck that I, I had no knowledge of where any of those cards were uh, beforehand. I was able to make that happen on the fly. Uh, and if I just took two random cards right now, like there's nine to five, the working man's hand, you know, now these guys wouldn't do this all night they wouldn't do it every time but uh they would wait until there was a giant pot and then it was like you know it was it was that's that's when they would act all right so nine to five all right what do you you what do you want the nine or the five i'm, I'm a big fan of the nine i like the nine all right whoops sorry that had nothing to do with me that was just me being sloppy all right i hit the nine but it came with two jacks you know, uh, I couldn't help the jacks. I got, so I got, I, I got pocket, I got pocket jacks though. Oh, you, you, you had the quads. <laughs> well, then I'm fucked. I got ace jack. I got ace jack. I got ace jack. Okay. I, I, I could go running nine, but, uh, but you know. So what are you doing to the cards right now? Lock, lock in. What are you doing to the cards right now? You got, you got hand. You like, look like you doing? No. Okay. They're just sitting there. What are you doing? You just, well, you here, just chilling. Cards, and, and you've got the cut card. Okay. Right? And this is this is by the way I'm 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 kind of reproducing what this guy would do. He would. He I would feel like you're here. rusty right now too. Oh, I am. I'm super rusty. That's I'm what I'm rusty. saying. I feel like you're rusty right now. Yeah, I'm super rusty. You know. This uh, is why I but, said this guy's an ex. This guy expert. Like you. This is like some. This is on another level. <laughs> this is, what I'm yeah, saying. I mean, this is why I'm saying. This is why I've been saying. Yeah, and I should I shouldn't go for, so far off. I don't want you to think that I'm that I'm actually doing anything off here when I when I do the burn. But yeah, you you need to just be able to, you know burn and turn and you put now now we got nine to five i didn't need the five you know uh -huh. uh, i probably should have just done the the nine because we already have the board pair uh -huh. you know but they they wouldn't do this every hand right and the thing is if if you already have a hand imagine you know you're going to get big hands then it makes it even easier like say you need um you know say you need to, to hit a uh spade draw let's let me put some spades out here you know and and uh Maybe maybe you're holding the ace of spades, you know, and uh, uh, you're, you're holding two spades. All right, here's all right. Here it is, and then nine. So so now you you maybe you got action against a big straight, right? All right. Now, if, if the guy who is dealing, uh, this is an easy one. You know, it, 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 if he just takes one, uh, does one little maneuver, and he knows that uh, uh, this maneuver is going to win his partner the hand. It's never noticed. It's burn and turn. And there's, you know, the nine, but you would probably do something that wouldn't pair the board you, based on, you know, his knowledge of 
what was going on. So if we want to do that without pairing the board, we just need to hit we just need to hit a spade. It might be a little more difficult because basically what was just done was something that was very close to the top of the deck. Now is something from the center of the deck, but you don't know that because you see it come right off the top. What the fuck are you doing, bro? Oh my okay. god. I and and dude, I figured this out what these guys were doing, and I told I told the guys um, who hired me what to to do with the dealer. I gave them some rules uh -huh. that the dealer had to follow, and I'm not going to say what they are right now. But when they enforced it, the dealer and the guy quit the game in two weeks and never came back. <laughs> so. Well, what, how do we protect ourselves? Because it, does, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of protection against this thing. I'm I'm. I'm blacked out in a private game. How do I stop myself from this right, happening? I'll just tell you this without telling you what I what what I was doing, which I will reveal, by the way, in my book. No, before. don't put, t bro. You got payment. You got to send me. I need you. To, I'm going to no, give I'm you my gonna, crypto. I'll tell, I'm going to send you, you my ETH address. Audience. You got to send me two K and ETH for that plug right there, Houston. Come on, buddy. You know how this works. You a Hollywood guy. I'm going to split my you, agent on the phone with you. You got to work out a deal with you, a retroactive <laughs> deal for that plug you just did for the book. Whatever. Okay. Here's how you defend yourself against it. Make sure that the dealer always we, you, they got that cut card this is called this the cut I, card I don't look this, like it does much to me i gave the move a name i call it the cut card call okay when you call something because the cut card comes in handy because you can hold the deck this way or this way you can turn it upside down you can be holding it like this when they are not dealing they need to have the fucking deck out of their hands okay <laughs> that is it that is it. That's the protection. They need the deck out That's of their hands. That's all you have to do. So if they if they if the deck is out of their hand for that particular problem, you know, and and if if you learn all the other things to look for, you start seeing these. Well, what are the other things? To look, what are some of the things to look for? Well, like 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 just just knowing that. Okay, let me give you another thing. Okay, this is uh, when when you're seeing a guy shuffle. I would make this standard in every casino when you do the riffle shuffle and you come in, you do what I would call a pinch square up, where you pinch it like that. If you do that every time, it makes it a lot more difficult to uh, see if I have a deck that's in uh, perfect order. This is a brand new deck. All right, so watch what I'm gonna do. This is a Kim deck, I haven't shuffled these in a while. Uh, but, uh, what if me and you? I got. What if me and you go to the mountains for a week? We do some mushrooms and we just do magic tricks with the card deck, and then I come back a fucking card mechanic god. What do let's, you think? Uh, I, let's hey, let's take the card mechanic challenge. We'll see how much I can teach you. Uh, now I don't know about these <laughs> mushrooms. I've never tried them. But. Allegedly, I mean, right. listen, it's legal. We're going only where it's legal, only in a legal state. Don't worry. All about right, this is okay. this is in new deck order. Okay. Now, I, I'm I, again. My hands are cold from based on how I used to to. Uh, see with this stuff but, but you know this is the standard shuffles it's going to be riffle you know riffle box okay let's see if i can get this right perfect order what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh job. my God! What is uh, happening? But if you do what I told you, if you make sure you do a pinch square up in the in at, after every shuffle, you can't control the cards that way. Okay. I mean, you maybe I don't know. Them. Maybe you can control the cards that way. How do, I don't know. It sounds seems looks like you can control <laughs> the cards that way. I, I, I I'm telling you, that's that's the look. You to to understand how to protect yourself against it. Unfortunately, you have to know all the things that are done. I know all the things that are done, and, and not only do I know them, I know how to do them. Uh, so, so I know how to, I know how to, then you start just thinking of it. Basically the way cheats uh, have always worked is they, they kind of temper their style to whatever game they're in. If, if the game is a bunch of dudes overhand shuffling, they're going to overhand shuffle. Right. Uh, but what happened in, uh, you know, you're too young to, to know this. And this is actually before my time. Uh, but believe it or not, you know, in the eighties, uh, when I was in high school or whatever, all the card rooms, they were self dealing. I have seen footage of guys from security footage on top. Like this is called a second deal. Like let's take, let's stay and this. Is, this was used a lot in blackjack, but let's take this ace of spades. Okay. So it, you, you, you're only calling one card. You're, you're controlling one card. You just want to make sure that you, you know, you keep control of that card, you know, whoops, sorry. I am rusty, but you keep control of that card. Okay. 
I don't even know if I did. Yeah, I think I did. All right. So, so you start dealing. All right. All right. There's the ace of spades. Uh, I'm going to deal uh, five cards down, and you're going to find another ace of spades. Okay. Uh, that's because I'm never dealing the ace of spades. It's always on the top of the deck. Right. So that's a what second deal. The so fuck? what a guy would do is he, he takes he would stack a uh, like an ace on the top and an ace on the bottom. Right. And uh, and now say he's shuffling the cards. He knows he's got one on top, one on bottom. And he, he's doing, you know, there's the box. That was a completely fake box. It didn't change the order of the deck at all. All right. And now he deals around. Uh, he wants to do himself the ace. So. You know, he's dealing around. Here's his first ace. All right. He's dealing around. All right. Here's his second ace. What? So, well, he, he, dealt one, he dealt one as a second deal. He dealt one as a bottom deal. You know, and watch how smooth these bottom deals look. You know, so oh these are got two God. aces on the bottom. Now, just watch. I'm going to do it slow. Okay. I'm going to turn that card over. You know, it's coming off the bottom. You know, you can also pitch him. You know, you can you can just, whoops, you can pitch him off the bottom. You know, and now I'm a little rusty. That was a pitch. That was a pitch. But when in, in the movie Rounders, when they say, I caught a hanger, Sarge, a hanger is when a bottom dealer goes for it and he and he misses. Like he's doing this and he, he misses like that. Or, mm, or the, the okay. card comes out and he gets stuck. You know, uh, or he, he it's exposed. Okay. Uh, you know, but but if you put these little safeguards in place, Joe, it, it becomes very hard to uh, allow a, a manipulator to. So wait, I, I'm still I'm still honestly unclear what the safeguards are. So what the safeguards are the deal because it doesn't appear there's a safeguard to what you're doing right now. Like if you're dealing in the game, I'm just praying that we're friends, right? That that would be my. <laughs> That would be, I would pray that, you know, the, the podcast and that you were the dealer in the game. If I'm not going to leave the game, I would pray that some of the questions that you enjoyed earlier in the podcast, right. If you're dealing the game, <laughs> it's the subtleties, it's, it's the subtleties okay. because if I, if I change one step, I can manipulate the entire deck. But if I come in and I riffle square up where the deck is untouched and you can do it fast, you know, riffle. You know that fast and then then box and it shouldn't be like you know the the really you don't need the really fast fancy box you just need a which i'm not even doing well right now uh, just a you know something that you just see them go straight down okay then you riffle again and and you got to do that pinch square up like that then hands off cut card around about a deck length forward one hand only right you know, that if you do that procedure, I'm not going to say it's impossible. Right. But it, the 98 percent of the mechanics out there, they only know how to do the guys who are like out there cheating to make money. They know how to do like one of these moves that I've just shown you. And they just do that move. And that's all they do. Mm -hmm. And they can make money their whole life doing it if they, you know, find the right company to to play in. Right. There's, there's not to, you know. Many, there's not a lot of guys who do all of these moves. Right. Um, so if you put these safeguards in, your game is is much more protected. So so I want as protected I, as a shuffle master. So I wanna I wanna make a I wanna go back to a different point, which is something you could you could think about, which is your point, right? Which is that you know, would you rather have the guy who knows how to do all this watching over the game, or would you rather have the guy who doesn't know jack shit about this and is literally never going to spot it or other things right but then again i go to other things right so i'm just i'm just going off what you're what we're talking about here right sure, you're, you're involved sure. in some things in but the that's past that's why i wanted to show you because i wanted you to think of these things that you know right right i mean i mean you know it, it's pretty like uh damn bro i can't play in private game no more so in these private no, games i mean do you do you think like this is happening a lot do you think this is like a common thing that happens in a private poker game joe I, I wouldn't walk into any private game that is uh, of considerable stakes uh, and assume anything else. I, I just always walk in assuming it's happening. And I used to, like in my, like in my late 20s, I used to go and almost like, because when you're that 
young, you full of piss and vinegar and you feel like you got balls of steel. I used to walk into these games knowing the whole game was rigged and, and I was a lone wolf. And it just as a challenge, I would sit there to spot, you know, these guys, I, you know, I mean, the stuff that they, they, they would do with holdouts and the way they muck cards, like you got your, you got your seven and they're, they're going to, they're going to, you know, gonna throw the seven in the muck. Well, they didn't throw the seven in the muck. They palm the seven, you know, I, I mean, they could take, they could take cards uh, and they were doing holdouts in, in casinos in Vegas, like, you know, in the eighties where you, uh, uh, you know, like, like this is, you know, is a switch, you know, where I switch the card, but then they were doing stuff where they, they have the holdout. Now it's in their hand, right? So they're holding out. Now they got they got to clean up, or maybe let's say they start in this hand, and and they swap this out for an ace they were holding out earlier, and and this is called a gambler's palm. And whenever I see a guy's hand like this, I always get suspicious because you can't see through it. It's, it's almost impossible. And then they'll bring their hands together, and this is a move Steve Forty showed me. He was one of the greatest uh, there ever was. And then they'll like scratch their hand or they'll do their wrist or whatever. And the whole time, there's no way there's a card still there. Right. And it what? is. What? Where is that? The table? Where is that at? And it is. No. And, and this is this is the kind of stuff that Shin Lim would do and, and you know, make it into like a. Oh, you know, a the magic guy, the piece. magician guy who does the Vegas thing, right? Yeah. Right. Okay, but, a, okay. but, a, but a card, but a card sheet, you know, they just, they have balls of steel. And uh, because what would happen if, if you caught a glimpse of someone holding out a card, you kick the shit out of them in, in some of the games that I used have you to ever play. have you ever gotten the shit beat? Have you ever got beat up? Never. You never got caught. None of this kind of stuff. You never got no. an altercation. But, but back in, you never back got in those, back in those days. The other thing about about, you know, being uh, like, I don't want to teach someone to be a great mechanic, but the, the guys who are great that they would come up against, they're not going to take a lot of chances. They're going to be able to do all this stuff. Very selective, though, right? Like I mean, this, that... and they're going to pick one spot, maybe right. two spots in a game, and that's you know, and they're going to play straight up the rest of the time. That's why it's sometimes hard to spot. You I mean, know, that, that would be the smart way to go upon doing it, right? Is like you not you don't go like, hey, I'm going to every session, I'm going to I'm going to look at my crotch area and like play like a god. Like, no, you'd pick your spot. I mean, that and that's the thing you can't really catch a lot of these things, but, right? But that, that's why you can do things. When you make sure that every time those cards are dealt, uh -huh. that they're dealt by the same procedure every time, if you're lax about it, even just a little bit, and so many games are, uh, and so many games are, like when you do that riffle, riffle, box, riffle, cut card, if you take one thing out of that equation and you just do like riffle, riffle, box and start dealing, or you do riffle, riffle, box, uh, and then you don't do another riffle and you go straight to the cut card, big shenanigans. You know, you take one thing out of the equation and they could completely be, be cold decking you, you know? So um, when, I'm at a, when I'm at a casino, right? When I'm playing at the casino last night, could this dealer be taking the cards out of the shuffle machine and be setting it? Is, there, is it possible for that to happen even in a casino in a high stake? Because my dealer told me last night that every private poker game in a casino is cheating. Now, I don't oh, know that, if he meant this. That, that's not true. That seemed aggressive. I was like, I mean, I don't think yeah. so, buddy. But he, he was very adamant. We were at the table like, what are you talking about? Because he was dealing there, this in the game. There, there, I'm not, I'm not going to say that, uh, that you know, there aren't uh, big games in casinos that don't have this. Because what happens is it's just like uh, what I told you before. They find a dealer that works there or they get a mechanic that, that – you know, they work him into the deal. This happens more historically. I've heard about it in blackjack where the money's much bigger and swifter and faster to, to get. Um, but yeah, it, it could happen, but there's so much, um, there's, there's, there's with the shuffle master, it's tough, man. Now there is a shuffle master. Another thing that they do where basically it doesn't work. It just makes a fucking noise and they got a cold deck in it. So you, you put the blue deck in the blue side, it goes down. There's another blue deck that it just moves that one out of the way uh -huh. and brings up the cold deck. And you use it one time a night, you know, whenever you want to cold deck the guy, right. you know, the, the cold decking, the way that they, they would always do that. You never are the dealer with the cold deck. Like the, the guy comes to like, he comes to give you the cards to cut them. Right. And, and you, uh, let's see, what would be a good a cold deck variant? Uh, uh, like say, uh, it could be, um, 
Yeah. So he comes to give them to me and I would just come up and I would go like that, you know, uh, or you would go or it would be more like you, you would have a, a deck. Uh, you would ring in a cold deck. Uh, you need to cut them. OK, I'll, I'll cut them. Boom. Boom. I just cut them. I switch the deck at the same time. You know, so, you, you, you know, so you come in and, and you're, you're cutting the deck, right? And, and, and you just switch it. Or you, you get the deck uh, for a cut and, uh, you know, you go down to look at your watch and you wrap the deck and you come back with a new deck. You know, guys would do stuff like that. But that happens more in like street games and stuff. You know, I mean, but the thing, uh, be, these are but these are pretty common games, right? Like there's a lot like there's a lot of places where there aren't poker games. So most of the games that run are these games. So it's like, I feel like there's a yeah. lot of games going on where it's self-dealing and, uh, you know, things like things like this are easy so to many be able them, to happen. And, and so many of them. And uh, but what, here's what happened. And here's why this new generation is not as hip to this stuff. Another big thing is is crimping. You know, it, it went, like if you have a, a, par a partner and you just, you just, you know, you crimp one, one card just a little bit and then you go to give him the cut. Well, he's always going to cut on the mark because you just cut right to the crimp, you know, and that happens in these private games all the time. Um, there's this game in Beverly Hills. I used to play with these old guys. This, they're like, well, there's a real estate legend and they were the worst and they were crimping all the aces. They all four aces would have a crimp in them. And I would get there and I was, and it would have passed the deal game. And there's, I was younger and I would just watch them do their thing. And then when it got around to me, I could shovel the deck like three or four times. And I have all the aces at the top if I wanted to, you know, um, mm -hmm. but, but that's harder to do with Kim cards. So, you know, so use these, it's harder to crimp them. Uh, but what happened is when all of the, when po Texas Hold'em became popular and, and we saw this, uh, even, even as late as like, in the game I did with Toby, when we were first at the Viper room, Dude, we were running a hundred, uh, no, a 100, 200 game with a $5,000 buy-in. Mm -hmm. so no one knew anything about poker. So, you know, you can't sit right with five grand at a one, two game. Uh, so these guys would all come and they would come to play with Leo and Toby and, and by one orbit, guys broke, you know, so he's reloading two more orbits. He's broke again. He doesn't want to be embarrassed. He's got the money. We know that when we invite him before the night's over, he came with, you know, oh, it's a five, just $5,000 buy. And he's lost like 30, 40 grand. Right. Well, none of them knew how to deal either. And that's the thing. Once, once home games started employing center dealers, guys to deal the cards, a lot more fish started playing. A lot more people came to the game. People are, um, self-conscious if they don't know how to shuffle in front especially like a lot of guys they're like you know like if they don't know how to dribble a basketball they don't want to be near a court or whatever because they're embarrassed mm -hmm. and we saw a lot of that happen with poker and all of a sudden it's texas holding it's so easy all i gotta do is hold look at these two cards and i don't have to deal or nothing so people just started playing the game completely unaware you know where these old timers guys like doyle man when doyle was running through Texas, you know, shit, he, he was ready to get shot every night. You know, he walked into games knowing that, you know, the games are going to be dirty. You know, he was playing with his guys, it was him and Sailor Roberts and Slim. I mean, I would love to hear all the, I mean, there's a lot of stories I know that unless Doyle wants to, you know, share those stories one day, it's not my place to do it. But, you know, imagine the shit that they came up against. They had to be very um knowledgeable but even the guys who were playing smaller games had a lot more knowledge about you know potential cheating than i think this this younger generation does except when it comes to like online stuff you know it's obviously different but um i think a lot of the young guys just feel like when that one outer hits they're like yeah well it's happened to me a thousand times online why wouldn't it happen at reggie's home game <laughs> you right. know what i mean where yeah. I don't know anyone and uh, someone told me it would be an easy clean, you know, uh, that's when wow. you got to start looking out for this stuff and knowing, you know, if a guy handles a deck in a certain way, it's, you know, shenanigans. Wow. So. I'm never going to look at a guy holding the deck of cards the same way again in my life. <laughs> I mean, like you, like you, you, you actually texted me, you were saying that, uh, a lot of the younger generation is naive to these things. Like I'm, I'm mainly an online player. I played millions of hands online poker 
And that's been my main focus for the you past what? Some shit. Yeah, since 2008, right? So that that's really, I never really even thought, I knew people were cheating, right? I didn't care. I was like, I'm going to beat all, I'm going to beat all the cheaters. I'm going to beat the bots. I'm going to beat the colluders. Like, I'm going to figure it out. And it, I never really put much thought into it, stock into it. I didn't worry about it. I let it get, get obsessed about it. Then when I started learning, getting more into live poker, I started to learn about some of the live poker stuff. And I just never really pay attention to a lot of this stuff. And, and you mentioned that you think a lot of the generation, younger generation, they go to these home games and they don't really even think about, they don't even know what to look for. They don't know what to watch out for. They don't know what to pay attention for. Yeah. So what, you, what sounds like what you're saying is that sure. the everyone should should be at least a little bit knowledgeable about what to look for in order to arm yourself to be able to spot when it's happening. But as you said, if it's a smart person, they only do it once or twice or or three times a night, then to that, it doesn't seem like there actually is any, any sort of deterrent against it. No, well, there is because uh, if, first of all, playing in private games is always going to be a risk. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, you, you, and I, I played in I, probably the most secure game ever. Uh, that game was as secure as any game I've ever played in, in a, in a casino, but I played in so many private games that just there's something dirty going on. But let's barring that, if you put the procedure in where the, the the deck has to be dealt with the same way every time, that one time that they go for it, you know. So I, so what do you what do you do? Is, I mean, okay, okay. okay. Let let's let's brainstorm this, right? I'm in a private game, right? I'm I'm had I had three drinks, right? I'm I'm feeling good, I'm friendly. I see this happening. What do I do? Do I stand up and say, you know what I like? What what do you do in that? You just fold. <laughs> Let me put it this way. As I was talking to some of the people to decide how much I should tell you about the Texas thing, at one point, a very wise guy who from the protection business is like, Houston, you realize like these are the kind of people who will, there's a lot of money online. They'll kill somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these guys, they're bad people, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so you gotta be, you know, careful. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of times when high stakes are involved, that's why clean money is so important, Joe, in these live streams, you know, uh, the casinos don't want to deal with dirty money. You know, they've had, there's been, you know, California card rooms have had issues with money laundering. And so it's the last fucking thing they want. And also when you're dealing with dirty money, you're also dealing with a guy who's willing to jack your ass in the parking lot and believe me, it happens, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, I, I, I think it's best if guys can wire money in and wire money out. I know a lot of that's just not the way a lot of poker players want to live their life. You know, uh, mm -hmm. the way we ended up doing it, we started out, we were running cash through a machine at Toby's house and it was so much cash. We were worried about getting jacked on the way out of his crib. So we just turned it to an all check game and I had to file a schedule C as a professional gambler, you know, and then of course, then the government fucked me because I got audited in 2006 where they, they, they took all my wins, but disallowed all my losses, all checked from the same people, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, but, but that's the best way to do it is to, you know, wire money in, wire money out. Um, because the, the kind of guys that, 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 uh, if you're not, if you have money, that's not, not clean playing in high stakes, that means you have people that, you know, may have done things for that money and they may do things to get that money back that are, you know, unethical. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, so, no, I mean, so, I, so yeah, yeah, I, I would, I, know, I would warn I people know a to lot of games like that. That's how it works. I, dude, I, I, I mean, I, I've been at games where, you know, and I'm probably one of the last generations that has, you know, maybe these stories of, I'm sure there'll always be the stories, but where it wasn't a big shock, you know, when the guy stood up with a gun, <laughs> you right. know, pulled out a gun, you know, um, but you know, back in Doyle's day, that was like, they expected that every time they walked into a new card room, mm -hmm. you know, and, and poker was, you know, even when I was growing up, it was looked at as kind of a, you know, it, it's like, you're going to go play in a poker game. Oh, that guy's a scumbag. He's off playing those dirty poker games at night. Yeah. They still had a, a thing about him. And now, you know, what would have been considered a card hustler in those days we call a legend today okay you so know? actually let's talk about that right so <laughs> here's actually my my issue with what's going on right now in poker which is the discussion about bryn kenny 
uh, Liam Servich, Jake Schindler, and a few other cast of characters, right? So mm -hmm. that's my actual thing is that a lot of these guys that they refer to as poker legends are basically have done, they've done way crazier things for many, many years. And then they, you know what I'm saying? Like, and those people, when it doesn't come out about them, then they're known as the poker legend. They're known as one of the greats. And these guys are still great players, known as great players. But, you know, I, I just don't know how to think about that, right? Because you mentioned Doyle Brunson. You mentioned Doyle Brunson, literally one of the biggest legends in the game. What do you think this guy Doyle Brunson was doing, bro? Like, come on, this guy is the OG of poker. Like, come on, what do you think? That, like you're saying, right? He got his team, uh -oh. he got around Texas. This guy's the the mob, to me, he's like the mob god. Like, this guy, like, survived. He thrived. Yeah, like, I mean, he's still who, doing who, it now. Who, who did he go to when when Spalatro was muscling him? Uh, he called Binion. And, and there was one guy that, that the mob wouldn't fuck with. Binion basically said, we'll fucking put your ass in a hole in the desert. If you, you, you know, that he was forcing Doyle to play for him. Yeah. Doyle's got some stories, man, that are just, you know, uh, it, look, the, the the problem is they'd be really fun to hear, but, you know, it's this this new culture, which is, there's so many great things about it. Um, there's also, you know, I don't want to say wimpy, but like I, I give you an example. And, and, and this is an example about someone I really respect. And so I, I don't mean any disrespect by it. And I, and I hope he doesn't take it this way because I believe he honestly feels this way. There was a game happening the other night where uh, a big player, one of the, one of the legends of live stream poker, uh, someone said, um, uh, someone asked, they were asking about a rubbernecking, you know, thing. Uh, what was that, what you know, cause there was the, there was a rubbernecking incident that happened and, and it became a, a talk where a guy was like, you know, I, I never say the name of the show, but you know what I'm what, talking what, about. No, I don't know. What does that mean? Oh, where the, where the guy was was peeking the guy's cards. Okay, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy wasn't protecting his hand. Right, right, right. right. And and so so one of the players in 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 my game, at live at the bike, said we were just casually talking, and he was uh, an older guy or older, and uh, he said, "What is the rule? Is is there a rule against uh, against rubbernecking?" And um, and this other player says, "You know, I am really offended that you would even ask that question." And I believe that he feels that way. But back in the day, Doyle would have said, the rule is to protect your fucking hand or you're a dumbass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it wouldn't have been this, I'm offended that you would even ask that. And that's not the way I look at it. I, I look at it like every guy out there is going to look at my cards unless I protect them. Mm -hmm. And if I don't, it's on me. Now, I have told guys many times at games, did you need to protect your cards? Right. And they either did or didn't. And if they didn't protect their cards, I'm not saying that I'm sitting there rubbernecking, but when I, how can you not use the information? You know, you, you tell a guy once, you tell him twice, you know, after that, you know, it, it's over. But to be offended for asking the question just shows it's a different mentality of today's, you know, pros. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but in certain cases, it might be naive, mm -hmm. you know, um, because yeah. there's always bad people. You so know, always Robert people. says, I repeat, cheating is fine part of the game. So I could see a scenario like that's sort of how I see it is like the, these people are like, if you're not looking out for this, then you're going to get taken advantage of by the people who are doing it. So if you think you're playing the this is why I like playing against the bots is at least I know the bots are fucking, at least I know the bots are, are playing an algorithm, right? So I'm playing against the algorithm. Whereas See, some of these other- I stopped playing online poker when I, I learned I was playing against a bot heads up once. This was years ago, so I don't know how good different they were then. It was uh -huh. like 2008, probably They're like when you now. started. And I was like, fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just, I, I, I quit playing. I'm the opposite. I, I want to you, you battle. You figured out how to beat the bot. I want to bad battle the bot every day. So I, I, lo I love battling the bots. That's crazy. Because in this other, I mean, it just seems like with live poker, with uh, even in non heads up, maybe this is just like a non heads up format, right? Because you hear about the, you know, when the Bryn Kenny stuff came out there, allegedly he's got more than one account in a tournament. And of course, if you got three accounts in a tournament, you're splitting action. I mean, and the accounts are gonna go after each other, or you got some strategies to do this kind of this or that. And by the way, Brent Kenny's coming on my podcast. So he'll be probably the next guest, either him, maybe Scott Seaver, gonna be the next guest on my show. So Brent Kenny's gonna talk all about what exactly 
I don't know what he's going to talk about, right? But we're going to talk with Bryn Kenny more right. about what happened with him and what GG Poker and the allegations against him. So, you know, that's going to be did that. But the allegations come from? They came from uh, Martin Zamani, who was a one of his former horses and former friends. And he was backed by him. And then, yeah, he had something happen where he came out with all this information, basically accused Bryn of doing everything right like you know uh, ghosting right. using art software using colluding at tables uh ghosting uh there's some sort of stealing money that from other seems super other cl other people that for he brought guy in for who affiliate knows i know for a guy who knows what i know about this online just freaks me out man like there has to be a way to button that shit up where no one can crack it and i feel like it's just like any other cheating thing every time you button it up somebody cracks it Every slot machine that's ever been made, someone has figured out how to how to crack the slot machine. There's not right. a lot of those guys out there, but you know they figured out and uh, so, went from the old automatic ones to the digital ones. They, now they hack them. So would you say that? Would you say that when you play poker and you're in this world, you sort of have to embrace the auto line activity that comes along with the people and the characters that are going to be a constant in this world for? A long time because you've obviously been around you've been around longer than me so you've seen a lot of these guys you know a lot of these guys are still around they're still out there hustling they're still out there grinding they this is how they make yeah. a living they probably ain't going anywhere anytime soon so you know it would you say that you could view the community and the game and the ecosystem in that way of like you know the only the strong survive and the ones who are some people play yeah. trade and their gto bots and their game selecting wizards they got they know how to handle themselves with their money and their discipline but the other people just say fuck it i'm gonna I'm going to, I'm going to handle it a different way. There, there, there is always going to be the guy who will find the guy who plays it straight with the GTO bots and is crushing it. And they'll purposely target that guy because they will know how to penetrate, you know, what, what he's good at through some type of cheating, you know, right. device. And I just think it's a, it's a safer, it, you know, some people are like, Oh, I don't want to, you know, you know, I'm not going to live like that where I walk around thinking everybody's cheating me. Dude, that's life, man. Go to right, Wall right. Street, go to any business. And if you're not, if you don't, I'm not saying walk around with your guard up, you know, mm -hmm. get a, you want to play a high stakes game with a bunch of buddies, you know, I mean, you know, our game was basically, you know, the same core five guys. And then there'd be a rotating thing of like three, you know, crazy players that would come in for like five years, you know, get a, get a small group of people that you enjoy playing with every week. And that's the your safest bet, even if you're playing online. I mean, I know you guys do that now, right? Yeah, you get so a bunch that's, of that's, what we, that's what I have. We got like a club of people and yeah, that's the uh, best I know the host, the host. No, I mean, still things happen, right? People ghost, people use the Collins. I'm sure people, you know, especially in PLO, if you got eight cards, 12 cards, and I got four cards, you know, you got pretty big. I mean, it's a big reason why I stopped. I just started doing other things. Took, I was fine taking time off because like, you know, I, I just know a lot of things that are going on. So it's like, you know, what's coming next in, in, uh -oh. is Neuralink. The, uh, the, the immersive, what do they call it? The um, Neuralink, the, the multiverse or whatever. The, the metaverse. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The metaverse, metaverse stuff, right. Where you metaverse have casinos, man, it's going to be huge. Yeah. There's a, there's like one ice poker that uh, I've talked with those guys a bit. I haven't really played ice poker before, but yeah, they got to be cheats going straight after that. You know, you, so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there will be, they're yeah, just for sure. It's interesting. Yeah. You know, there will be someone uh, they can't help themselves man they, mm -hmm. they 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 can't you know uh if they're like a tech cheat no any new tech that comes out they gotta go gonna, after it yep yeah, so time. robbie so, says my gut feeling curtis doesn't want to be a bad guy but maybe he likes like the thrill and the drama of it i mean i can kind of get that right when you t when you're showing the hands like when you're showing the moves when you're talking about the yeah. stories i can see I can feel the excitement. I can feel the nostalgia. I can feel the the energy behind how that makes you feel, right? So, but it's kind of that feeling you get when you you watch a movie about this stuff, or you hear a story about it. You know, I've just I've kind of lived some through some of it. So, yeah, he's not necessarily wrong, uh, right. and you know, and I don't know if I should feel bad about feeling that way. But I, but but one thing is true is. I don't want to be a bad guy, Joe. I want to run a clean house. Mm -hmm. I want to, when, when I leave this world, you know, I, if I'm known for anything in poker, I don't want it to be to, that. I'm just known for, for being able to do what I can do with these cards. I want to be known for building something that was bigger than myself. 
mm-hmm. uh, and being a part of something that made a, a, a mark in the history of poker. And, uh, you know, um, I feel like I'm on the right track to do that. And, uh, you know, and I hope I continue to get that opportunity. So you think there won't be any issues with you being in charge of the operation with any sort of background or stories? And I don't know what the process is for those no, things in LA, if, you know, if there is not, a process for that. Yeah, they're, they're, look, believe me, uh, especially at the level I'm in, the vetting is is heavy, you know, they, they, these, but, but you gotta understand corporations have historically hired guys with my kind of knowledge and trust guys with my kind of knowledge to know how to run games that aren't going to get them in trouble, mm-hmm. right? And the last thing that uh, that I can have is um, the people I work with getting in any kind of scandal or anything, which is why this is a big risk, you know, even t- talking because I don't want some scandal about, but but they know, every, everybody I work with knows, you know, my story, has mm-hmm. read my book or whatever. Um, and, you know, I, I truly, truly believe that it's, that at the end of the day, it's an asset, uh, you know, no understanding this. But I also think it's teachable. And I don't think you have to be able to do everything I do with this to understand, um, you know, go go buy, in all seriousness, go buy Poker Protection by Steve Forty. Um, it's hard to find book, probably cost you 300 bucks. But, um, you know, just in that book alone, like every casino poker room should have. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and that's a book. You know, I'm going to do a book with a video component, too, because it just makes it easier to understand. You know, I can show every angle and what people are doing. Uh, it's also, you know, learning, you know, if you were going to run your own game and you're going to put security cameras, learning where to put them. One of the toughest things in figuring out, you know, that that miracle thing that I showed you with the cut card, which, by the way, is. I mean, I, I don't think I created it. I basically recreated what I thought they were doing, but it forced me to come up with figure out a way to do it. I'd never seen that done before. It's a very dangerous move. But one security camera in the right spot would keep that move from ever happening in any type of legal casino. Mm -hmm. You know, um, these guys only had cameras coming from certain areas. And I and that's what I had to review. I'm like, dude, if if you put a camera in behind them, it'd make it a lot easier. And for some reason, they they didn't want to do it, or I don't know. Should, what the deal should, have was, you ever looked at the, any any of Mike Postle's greatest sessions? Have I ever looked at? Any have you of ever them? watched him play poker on live stream before? Some of his live stream yeah. sessions. What are your yeah. What are your thoughts on that whole situation? Well, I I uh, always wanted to know more about um, his cohort. Hmm. I, I was just interested in who was sending him the information. I think everybody was. Yeah, I think everyone's interested in what what was going on. You know there, what yeah. I mean? Yeah, maybe uh, I mean, maybe I, we get that. Maybe we big... get that. Po- I feel like we're gonna have that podcast one day. Me, one v one with Mike Possel, and uh, that's gonna be the most watched podcast in the history of poker. I believe if me and Mike Possel sit one sit down one on one and uh, have a discussion uh, that, about. Uh, I, I I'd, I'd be watching. I, I would, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, who's not gonna watch that? Yeah. I mean. You know, the, the question is, you know, how long uh, did, did, did they ever you, you went back to every tape, right? I, I watched uh, a lot of them. I didn't I don't watch every single one, but I, I watched a, a large amount. I watched too many than I should have ever watched. Probably. <laughs> probably. Yeah, probably, you know, nor, normally look as soon as live stream poker came out, just the way my mind works. For good or bad. And, you know, I say for good. Um, I immediately said, well, that's it. That's a matter of time mm-hmm. <laughs> because, it, you know, it's just a matter of time. Poker players can't help themselves. When we put poker players in charge of full tilt poker, look what happened. They yeah. can't help themselves. These are people that we idolized, right? That, uh, or that a lot of kids did, whatever. Um, they can't help themselves. Uh, so with that saying about now, yourself, way, can, you, can, you, can you, can you help yourself like then? Right. I mean, can you help yourself? Yes, because you. Uh, I mean, you said look, you said they can't help look, themselves. I mean, I, maybe, gave Howard that's what I'm Lowe, saying about like with anyone, you, right? When I when I hear this, I'm like, man. Anytime, anytime this guy wants Howard to turn Letter it on, he's gonna turn, turn up the heat. You know, let me ask you something. If anyone gave Howard Letter another chance to run a poker site, uh-huh. you think he would? Do you think he would run it square? You know, it's it's that, <laughs> no, uh, not really. I don't think so. Maybe he doesn't know well, how. I, I I, I think I think he lost so much that I I just you know I mean people can 
you know, learn from their mistakes. And I'm not saying go give poker, give him a, a poker site, you know, and, and I, you know, uh, was once very, you know, close with, with Annie, his sister. Um, but I just always assume that something, you know, uh, it, when, when, when you get a bunch of poker players dealing with a bunch of money, I just think the best thing to do is to be cautious. That's what I mean. That's what I'm doing here. We got a bunch no, and, of poker and, players and, dealing and, with a bunch what? of money. I agree. I'm, I'm, and, I'm and, on and the I, side of you on this one. Yeah. We're coming full circle and I exactly. completely 100% respect it because yeah. without guys like you, uh, Mike Posto would still be doing it. He, it would have been a blip, you know, and he might've moved to somewhere else and changed his name and kept doing it or whatever. He can't escape it now. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, the only thing that you have to be is responsible when you're, and, and I think you always have been, which is why I didn't fear coming on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you've always been responsible in the way that you, I mean, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're, a, you're, you're, you can be a hit man and you can, you can rage on, uh, on stuff and it's entertaining. But I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, if you would have ever had an inkling that Mike Postel was, well, was. well, someone else told me that the, the girl who worked on the show, Veronica Burrell, she's the one that reported to me. And I was like, you know, listen, I get a lot of reports like, you know, you're probably yeah, I mean, not. I know Veronica broke it originally, but, and then you carried it. Well, I mean, I never seen I never seen it. I mean, this was this was entertaining. If I got to watch this was the most entertaining poker I've ever seen. The guy was fucking and playing like a god. You know what I mean? Like, I just never seen anything like that before. So what was I'm your watching. favorite? What was your favorite? Uh, what was his biggest tell in your opinion? Uh, I mean, there was the was one, the... there was the, there was the one, there was the one time where he like looked at the crotch and like the card came and he like shook his head before any action happened. That wasn't good. I was like, man, there was like the PLO one where he, he doesn't know their, I mean, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a few that really stood out. I can't, I try to, you know, I try to black that out of my mind. What, what the hell have one might, See? might, cause I mean, you know, listen with this guy, like I've talked to this guy a bunch. I've talked to him since then. You know what I mean? We've had discussions. We've had conversations, you know, like I, I, I my goal, I'm trying to watch, I, I'm not going to hate this fucking guy, right? Like it, it is what it is. Whatever happened, whatever this guy chose to do, the guy chose to do whatever happened, happened. And now, you know, you're not going to, I'm not going to go on for it for the rest of my life thinking about thinking about him. And, you know, hopefully he's, he's doing well for himself. I don't know. Right. Like, I, I don't know. I can't, right, right. I don't really think about it from like this, this, you know, well, hurtful you know, when, or harsh someone standpoint. Takes, uh, when you, someone takes a shot like that, they know what the risks exactly. are. Exactly, and, that, and that's what I told them, bro. I was like, you know, listen, Paul, you, you, like, you, know, <laughs> you know, what'd you expect, I mean, bro? Like, it, what, it, you know? It, here's, it, here's why we, when I say we, me and like a couple guys like in the, you know, gaming protection world, uh, you know, there's not a lot of us, but we all knew it was amateur hour, you know, uh, because, right. The guy was like, it's like he was the Garrett Adelstein of, of that casino, right? He was like, a, they're writing books about him and shit. Look, for whatever you want to say about, about like a guy like Russ Hamilton, mm -hmm. um, Russ Hamilton is probably been, you know, one of the biggest proposition betters. Like him, he's like one of those old school guys I, that I would compare very much. And I, I don't mean this in a disparaging way to, to Doyle because, you know, I think Doyle is the godfather of poke, but guys from that era, right? They were proposition betters. They were sharp. They were all, but they, you know, like if you ever asked Russ, Russ, how'd you do? Oh, I'm getting buried. Houston, I'm getting buried. I'm getting crushed. You know, they never wanted glory, never wanted to be, you know, that's why they didn't even like tournaments at, at first, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's always like, they always want to be the, you know, I'm just getting killed and murdered and they're not, you know, and, and there's that mentality is gone because we live in a world of, uh, you know, instant, Bra instant uh, fame and right, right, TikTok right. and, you know, yeah. Yeah. And everyone wants to be, you know, and I, I understand that urge. I think everyone ha has it to a certain degree, but, mm -hmm. uh, but those old timers, there was a certain respect I had for them because of, of the way they pushed that away. Mm -hmm. Then it started changing, but, you know, do you, you, do you know anything about Devilfish? All do, do you know? Remember Devilfish? Uh, I just me, saw. Tell me, I just you saw. You're not so young. You, no, I, I, I really like did. a lot of those old school guys, like early 2000s people. Like I basically just watched a lot of people around ESPN, and then when all I started right, well, playing online poker, I just literally focused on online poker for 
many, many years. I watch right, high well, stakes poker and stuff David like that. he would wear uh, this cool like thing on his knuckles and yeah, he ring. was just like this cool character and he became a big famous poker player. He played, he was on high stakes poker, I think. But uh, a lot of people don't know, David Devil was a fucking safe cracker for a bank robbery team. You know, <laughs> like, like the, allegedly he becomes this poker. Po he oh. was a safe cracker. Oh. He was the guy, like there was the getaway guy driving the getaway car, uh -huh. the guy planning the job, then they got to call in the guy who can crack the safe. That was, you know, the, at least that's what, you know, I like uh, I, I, I've heard. Yeah. And there's a lot of stories about the these guys like that, that um, as poker became famous, you know, everyone, no one, they kind of glossed over that. And now that is kind of glossed over. That sounds like <laughs> it sounds like they did. Huh? It sounds like they did gloss over that one. You're right. Oh, he's a, a professional bank Craig bank robber. <laughs> they must have. Yeah. Imagine if imagine if if that came out about some player today. Imagine if all of a sudden you heard uh, it's like, hey, did you know that uh, you know I don't know name any hot player today. Matt Berkey. Did, did you know that he? Yeah. Yeah. Remember. Did you know that Matt Berkey did like a year in prison for safe cracking? Can you imagine? Like he would be done. He would be done. I don't. I don't think you so. Know? I think. I think it might work out well for him. I think it would do well you, for his you image. Think, you think? Yeah, I think it'd do well for his image. Yeah, I think if he came out that he spent, he did that for safe cracking. I think it would actually be good for Berkey's image because he's known right now as like. Right, well, the I real... have something to tell you about Matt Berkey. We're gonna break it on this show. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. What do you got? What do you got? Yeah, <laughs> I never. I love Matt. Matt's great. I love Matt. Yeah, you've been uh, you've been no. you've been working with him a, a lot. He's he's been he's been playing. Yeah, uh, I I really like him. Um, yeah. you know he had a couple rough nights, but then he had a couple great nights too. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I like him a lot. I, he's got a lot of integrity. Well, let's give some shout outs to the people in the chat. You want to give any shout outs, Houston? Anybody watching out there? You want to say what's up to? You want to you want to say hello? Maybe maybe uh, maybe maybe you got a nice lady out there watching yeah, I, or something like I, that. I, I, it's funny is I can't even see the chat from the way I'm. Uh, you don't want to see the chat crazy. You don't want to see these guys. These guys are out of line. That's the big. They, oh, that's they, the legion. You don't want to. The legion. The legion is. The legion is. They're, they're, they're tearing me. Tearing me apart. <laughs> I mean, the legion. The legion. They, sometimes they don't like people, right? But sometimes they do like people. They like things people say. Sometimes they don't like things I say. Sometimes they put. You know what I'm saying? You never know what the legion's gonna wake up with. But let's get some well, shout outs. Who we got out there? Steven Roach. What's happening, Steven? Chad. Anzalane, Papi, Colamosa, Ryan, Rob, what's up, Papi, Pat O'Cal, what's up, Pat, Scuffed Comedy, Sam, EJ Grant, what's happening, Andrew, Andrew, can you talk about how predatory the Lodge live stream is to local Texas players, basically removing stacked games from the room and taking all the action players and draining them four days a week? Oh, I don't know anything <laughs> about that. We're going to learn this weekend because we're taking a trip down to the Lodge to visit Doug Polk and his beautiful card room and check it out down there. Payne, what's happening, Payne? Kevin Clarkson, what's up, Kevin? Robert Noss, Paul Smith, Papi Marine, Blunganger, what's happening? My girl, Dark Angel 7091, Sugar Mama, what's happening? Mamacita, Colomosa, Calamoramota. My man, Big J, Jamin Burton, glad you're back, bro. Thank you, Big J. Much love, Big J. Check out his great content on YouTube. Tobias Grinder, what's happening? Lord Octavius, Johnny Presto, Haji, Billy McKilly, what's happening? Ma Shark, what's going on? What do you got? You got a shout out? What do you think? You got to have passion. Uh, well, you got to have passion for these people. These people show uh, up. Listen, they could be anywhere in the world. It's 3 Pacific, three Pacific time. We've had 1,300, 1,400 people watching this thing live. They're fired up. They're locked in. The Legion's fired up. And uh, hey, shout, Legion. Shout, to, shout to Sarah Palmer. You seen the Sarah Palmer girl on Twitter? You don't see, You ain't seen this girl on Twitter, right? Uh, tell me about her. She, she writes out a lot of long threads. She's talking about the poker great awakening. She's talking about building poker back better. She's wants yeah, to expose yeah. the Illuminati connection in the poker industry with the elite, the powers that be and the current high profile figures in the community. You, when you say that you're talking about the Phil Helmuth to the world, the, uh, I don't know. I haven't seen her talk much about Helmuth, but I've seen her talk about, uh, my man, Dan Negreanu, shout out to Dan Negreanu. I've seen her talk about some of the bigger companies in poker. She's got it out for the world series of poker due to the vax mandates that they proposed in the past and she thinks that the vaccines were going to hurt a lot of people so she's not a supporter of the people that were pushing it in the poker industry specifically and she's uh she's on a vendetta she's out out i don't know if you heard about her though or not no but i but i but i look forward to you. i like uh you know people who think different and uh, have interesting things to uh, discuss and anytime the illuminati is mentioned I, i'm a sucker for that 
Well, you were in Hollywood. You you are you in are you into you 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 know about that kind of stuff. You mean you talking about the dark rituals? Uh, I mean, yeah, it could be whatever you want. I mean, I don't know. You've been you've been. I, I heard games. some crazy stories in Hollywood, man, like some shit that you know for another show. But yeah, you know, yeah, there was. Uh, Oh, was a weird what about what about uh let me just name a few a few people let me see what, what do you think about it garrett adelstein garrett adelstein he's in the mix playing a lot he's been on your show he's been on hustler casino yeah. live what are your thoughts on on garrett adelstein steen garrett, garrett adelstein uh, i think garrett has cultivated um i think he he would be the number one guy in the live stream world who has um cultivated a great image for himself for for the fan base uh and he has um taken the format very seriously and learned how to basically be a live stream pro mm -hmm. and and he's kind of the gold standard of live stream pros and you can't fault him for for, for being that you know mm -hmm. like, like i would say in my day what what garrett garrett adelstein is like a you know right now they're calling him a first it was an la legend now they're just calling him a poker legend or a live stream legend in my day we would have called that a, a poker hustler <laughs> a card hustler guy you know who just <laughs> He, he, he found this good little cherry patch right, right? and he's just going to show up and eat all the cherries uh, for as long as he possibly can. The, hung, uh, the hungry guy, the guy, the guy's got, his guy's got to keep eating, you know, he got to, he <laughs> got to keep eating. He got to keep yeah, getting uh, fed. Yeah. So, but you know, poker hustler uh, is, is a derogatory term now, whatever, but in my day that's or card hustler, whatever. Uh, but now it's, uh, it's kind of cool because you get to be uh, beloved for, right. uh, you know, uh, figuring out how to make your living off of it's a fine line in poker, right? It's loved and, and fucking just fucking despise. It's really it's like, a would, I, would I love to see Garrett take on Limitless? Hell yeah, I would. Yeah, would I love to. You know that like that's, that's, a that's a match you'd like to see. I would love to see Limitless. Limitless told me he would love to play Garrett. You know, you know the match. What show. about what about Poker Bunny and, and and Garrett? Would you like to see that one? Poker Bunny oh, been on your show before? Are you you kidding me? I would I would. Uh, I would wow. put that in a minute. You're getting live stream hard over there. You're getting 15. You're getting 15 live stream yeah, hard thinking about Poker Bunny and Garrett <laughs> battling, huh? I think Poker yeah. Bunny underrated. She's coming. I'm telling you, Poker Bunny's coming. She's been in the lab. She's a child of the sim. She a little. She a little different, right? Some of the things she says. She ruffles some feathers. We've seen the strategy in the past, but we see a lot of people. They have a hot three years in poker. A hot two. A hot. You know, they don't. They don't necessarily last for a long time, but. Well, I got to tell you one thing about Poker Bunny. Uh, my partner Rick Mar. Rick has said from day one. We'll see. We'll see if he's, he ends up being right. He thinks Poker Bunny has a long term strategy, and he, he thinks, got something. That's for sure. Shot the Poker Bunny. She's got some kind of long term strategy, and he thinks we're going to see a lot from her. And I hope we do because, uh, you know, uh, she's she's an interesting player. Yeah. Shout out to my man Stephen Bays with the four ninety nine in the chat. Shout out to Stephen. The king of the king of mattresses down in uh, actually mattress max the king of mattresses down in Houston but Steven, my what guy great story he's got huh he got it he got, he got poker stallions he got fourteen players he's staking in the World Series of Poker he gave him a forty k bankroll fourteen players and so my man he works with Anthony Curtis who is my publisher that I told you about Anthony is the guy who put all you know uh -huh. put all of his bets down the big mattress max story the, oh you know. really yeah, interesting that's my okay guy. okay so mattress Mac works with works with your publisher. So he, for, Anthony for, Curtis, for all the big bets, he Anthony. always promotes stuff like that. Yeah, when, when he was looking to a uh, guy to trust in Vegas, he went to he went to Anthony Curtis. Mm -hmm. Huntington Press, Las Vegas Advisor. Shout out to those guys. Shout out to Live at the Bike. Shout out to to, to, to Brian and, and Wayne and, uh, and and Rick and Matt, and all the boys uh, who Shout are working Tyler hard. St. Louis with a $1.99 donation. Hit that air horn. Shout out to Tyler. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. And uh, guys, listen, if you're in the chat, if you got any questions, you know, we've been kind of going for a long time here. You know, we, we appreciate, uh, you know, Houston coming on here and uh, answering some questions, right? Not always the, 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 they said, listen, Haral Bob said, you know, I should go, I should go a little, little in. Plus I'm, I'm fired up. You know what I mean? Plus like, you know, most people won't, come on here and talk about the th these kind of things, right? They don't want to paint themselves in a way that, you know, they always want to be loved. They want to be viewed positively. They want everybody to like them. And I understand that completely. I'm someone yeah, who- I think everybody want, yearns for that, right? Yeah. No, yeah, I definitely can understand that, so. But you have to be willing to, sometimes you got to be willing to, you know, uh, get in the dirt, you know, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you, if you want to uh, truly live up to what it is that you hope people think about you. Sometimes you, you got to be willing to step in the step in the mud or take take some tough questions. So 
yeah. Uh, but what is Geraldo saying? Throw more hard questions at Houston. Is no, I, so he he told me that yesterday. <laughs> shout out, I mean, I love I love Geraldo. It's my guy. So shout out to Geraldo. Yeah, he's. I do uh, too. You know, I know him for a long time. I, so I I, 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 su I support right. the people I know for a long time. You know, my one of my I like to support these guys, right? I know how tough it is out there in the war for some people, right? And and you know, maybe Haralbaum not specifically, right? But like I feel like in the commu poker community itself specifically, that you really need to support the people that support you and that have been supporting you for a long time. I've known a lot of these guys ten years. I've had a lot of these guys on my show. I've got to know them, spend time with them. I plan to be around poker for quite a while. So I think a lot of those relationships are what get you through the day and what get you get life worth living and what give meaning to your life. And, and especially getting through the ups and downs of the poker grind and having a business and just being existing in this fucking world sometimes is tough. So I think sure. that for me, at least what I like to do is provide that support or help people out. However I can, it's, it's hard because I know a lot of people personally, but that's sort of my approach to it. So, you know, a lot of these poker guys, like I just know, I think, I think back on it during my break and and you know you 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 think about the people that were there for you or that have been kind to you or that have been caring to you or that have been helpful to you and then you think about the people that have been fucking assholes to you right and and you know you decide how you want to handle that so it's just i, I thought about these kind of things a lot and you know especially people I, i've been friends with for a long time which so. scale is is heavier for you oh the like I, I mean even the people that have been mean you know whatever like this is all good you know they they i, I ain't been the nicest person always too you know, sometimes I take some shots at people. Sometimes I'm over aggressive. I try to be in line, but you know, sometimes I get a little out of line. It happens. And, uh, but yeah, I, 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 the good, the good far always the bad for me these days. Well, I, I, I think, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you're either a reasonable person, uh, or not. And, uh, I think the guys who are scared to come on your show, um, are guys who are, are guilty as charged. It's, Maybe, it's yeah. someone scared to face the music uh, because you, you you don't cut corners. I mean, I've watched enough of your stuff to 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 know that uh, you're not going to come on and just do a cakewalk. Maybe. Um, yeah, I'm excited uh, to have Bryn Kenny on the show. That's going to be a good one. That'll be good. Because I know Bryn be for a long time, so, you know. Yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. He gonna be you got you got any questions for me, Houston? I mean, we haven't talked really before, so I know I know you try talking to me, but do you have any have any have anything you want to maybe ask me about? I was wanting to see if any of my guys had anything that to ask you. Yeah. Um let me see in the chat. Uh we got a couple things in the chat. Who Kevin Clark says that who hired you or did you buy live at the bike? Um I've been in negotiations uh uh for live at the bike for a while, Rick and I had, and uh, we were going to uh, go out and you know raise the the money, and um, and then we we had an opportunity to uh, uh, to work with Bally's, and uh, it turned out perfectly. And uh, you know they have um, uh, just some incredible things that these guys are doing, just incredible. They, they they're the first, they're the only company that's. Um, that, that uh, to this level that is merging everything, brick and mm -hmm. mortar with, you know, the the highest tech, they bought Gamesys out of, of Europe, uh, they bought Monkey Knife Fight. So the tech, uh, the entertainment uh, and the brick and mortar, uh, the, the chairman uh, of Balance has a real vision and uh, I'm super, super honored uh, and, uh, feel a big responsibility uh, to be a part of that vision and uh, help them grow their business. Yeah. Do you still have a relationship with uh, with any Toby Maguire? I know you were, you know, you guys did the poker thing for a long time. Do you still talk to him? And I know he's uh, he just did Spider-Man. It seemed like he kind of went under the radar for a long time. He married the CAA uh, co-founder's daughter. She was like a president of what Universal. You know what? That's uh, a good Jen, Jen, Jen used to deal the game in Toby's kitchen when we first did she? started. Yeah, that's and crazy. that's where the uh, the the uh, that's how I met her. That's how I met her, met met her. Oh yeah, yeah. Before they were married, uh, I mean, you know, look, the night I common lost story in poker, right? You you date the massage girl, you date the there, you date the other poker player, you date the dealer, you date the floor. Well, they were dating, and they, and they were living together already. And she she I think you know her her dad Ron um, is is historically known as a big player, and uh, um, I remember the the night Toby and I ran o over to play with at Gabe Kaplan's house. It was at Gabe Kaplan and Ron Meyer. And that we, we hadn't played that big yet. And, and, 
I got all in immediately against Gabe Kaplan, ace king versus ace queen, and lost twenty thousand. So, and, and right. that was my first experience there. But but uh, yeah, Jen Jen Dalt and uh, Toby and I were very close. Uh, you, you know, it was a weird thing, Joe, when I um, when you're rolling with this crowd. Yeah, uh, uh, I I feel bad for the 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 shit storm that he took off of Molly's book, and that's what kind of made me mad because I really loved Molly. She was like a little sister to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we all, it was such a, an incredible ride, you know, the amount of money that was being made and everything. Uh, and she was getting rich. She made 30,000 a night in tips. It's like, why, why go write a tell all book trashing the guy who gave you that opportunity? I never understood it. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, I guess she had lost everything too. And maybe that was her desperation. I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But uh, but since those days, I kind of felt weird. It's like when all of a sudden you're flying in private jets and you're doing all this stuff and then you can't. It's like you don't want to be the guy who's like going and hanging out with the guys that you used to do all the cool shit with. I, guess, <laughs> so, I, I mean, that's that's one view. I could see that. Yeah. I mean, a perfectly reasonable view as well. You know, I you, just you... kind of backed away from a lot of, you know, guys who I, you know, considered really good friends. But now those doors are more open and, and, you know, one thing I know about Toby, he'll never play on a live stream. And I took him to a tournament, Phil Helmuth hosted a tournament once at Hollywood Park or something. Toby won the damn thing. He didn't even want to take a picture for the, mm-hmm. for the tournament. It's not because he's an asshole. It's just the way he just doesn't like press and, and stuff, you Makes know. Sense, uh, yeah. So he's an easy target in some ways because he doesn't go out and defend himself. You know, you, he never said a word. And look, this, the, the whole thing with it, Every time he comes up is someone, even my, my book, when I tried to kind of write the wrongs of, of what Molly had said about him, people would read my book and still come out of it and say he's an asshole. I'm like, well, fuck, you know, there's nothing I can say, you know, the people who are going to think what they think. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, Toby, you know, the one, the one thing uh, about him is, uh, uh, I, I was on with uh, uh, Adam Carolla when my when my book first came out, and he was asking about Toby, and and I said, "Don't count Toby out. He's super smart." Like he's like, "Yeah, we haven't heard from him in a while." I said, "This kid is smart. He is going to do something, and it's going to be huge." He's like, he's like, "Well, I don't know." And he starts pointing about all these people who 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 weren't able to make comebacks, and I said, "Well, the good news is if he has to take his ball and go home today." He's going home with about a hundred million dollars. So he had a, he had a great he, career. He, yeah. Yeah. I mean, also okay. when your when your stepfather it was the president of Universal, it's pretty good. Pretty good guy to know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, right, when your right. stepfather's I mean, friends are the other presidents of the other major entertainment companies, and a great guy. I mean, at one point, Ron Meyer was probably the one of the most powerful guys in Hollywood. Right, because he co-founded and, and CAA, a, so he's huge, he's, he, he, huge gambler. Like we used to he? say, Ron plays with a lot of heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was a big gambler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it 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 you know might have been a, an issue for for him in certain parts of his career if you dug into it, but uh, but really liked him and and uh, uh, yeah he, he there there were good people in Hollywood man. There's a bunch of there's a bunch I think of it's like it's like poker, bro. There's there's good people in poker yeah. and there's people that are out of line. So it's like the and then you see them together, you know, like you see. The, I know like all the these. Guy. Guys. I know all the guys. I know the guys, and I know I know everyone in poker. The good, the good, the bad, the good, the bad, right? The auto. Uh, like Viffer on here. You ever talked to Viffer? Oh yeah, Viffer. I love Viffer. Yeah, he's Viffer tells you some great he's stories. Crazy guy, yeah. bro. He's just he just he <laughs> actually he actually responded and he no he actually commented on on this post actually and he said something. Let me see what Viffer wanted to know. Shout out to my guy Viffer. He's uh, I don't know what he's up to now, but. We uh we got a lot of love for him. He a crazy guy. I, I like Viffer. He a real that's a real crazy guy. At one point, I was doing a little uh, sizzle reel with Viffer and uh, uh, <laughs> the most unlikely matching, um, Twitter uh, Bilzerian, and they were going to start their own strip club. They had a bunch of money, and they wanted to start their own strip club. And I was shooting a sizzle reel on on the strip club. I still got it somewhere. If I find it, I'll. Vi- I'll Vi- <laughs> well, Viffer it. said, "I've known Houston a long time. First. If he was a cheat, he wasn't a good one. I played in those games with him, and it seems like the only person he cheated was himself if you saw him play. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What the bang, it. bang, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> there you go. Hey, by the way, by the way, that's why he didn't play more often. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Bang, that's bang. where it came down to game selection. You know, whenever Viffer started coming to the game, it's like, all right, 
you know, he's fun to play with, but, yeah. uh, uh, Thank you for that, Viffer. I actually appreciate that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I guess I guess we're gonna see what, what you do with your position now, right? We're gonna see. You know, you. Hey, you hey may... question for your audience: Do Go they ahead. want to see me play on stream? Play on stream? No, I don't want to see with the cards. No way. What are you talking about? No, no, I don't. No, 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 no. Let's let's talk about that. Because do you think the people who are in charge of the stream should be playing on a stream? Because we got Doug's doing that down at the Legion. He's doing it with Brad. Andrew's playing on there. Nick Vertucci's playing on there with Hustle Casino. I, I don't really honestly watch a lot of the other ones right now, so I don't know who else is playing on their own. Those are really the ones I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention to right now. Poker Go. I mean, yeah, the owners, of, the owners of Poker Go play because... on Poker Go, right? People that own equity in Poker Go play on Poker Go. So yeah. do you think people that own equity in the overlying company should be allowed to play on a stream? Yeah, I, 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 as long as the game is being ran straight, there's it should mean... It shouldn't be any different, you know. It may set a bad precedent by the fact, very fact that you're asking the question, you know. So, but I don't really know the answer to that. I, I, I think I'm maybe conflicted. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I don't think so personally, right? I mean, I know it's great entertainment. I want to see Doug Polk. I want to see Andrew Nemi. I want to yeah, see Brad like, Owen, right? I want to see, I want to see these guys on stream, but. I don't know. That's my, that's I mean, how I, I feel about it, it right? But that, that, I don't think I don't. I don't think so. Channel is what? if Doug Polk and Andrew Neely play on their stream more often. That's that's how they're going to grow their channel, right? Exactly. Yeah. But that that's obviously the conflict of interest. Of course, they're going to say, you know, yeah, we should be able to do that, and I'll ask them, and they'll say it should you be know, perfectly I mean, fine it, too. Look, if it comes down to people bitching about stuff like that, it's like Jesus Christ, where's it going to end? Yeah, I mean, is that, really, is that that, I mean, is that bitching? I don't know. Like, do I want Phil Nagy playing playing heads up PLO against me on ACR? Like. No, I don't. I don't want to play against the guy. Maybe if he brings his other accounts to the game, you know, maybe I feel better about playing him. But if he's on the Phil Nagy account, I know it's Phil Nagy playing against me all the time. Like I, I, that's just me. Everyone's different, right? I'm not, it's not my business. It's not my decision but, to make too. But, but you're, you're someone in that position. There's more than one table, right? Or more than one night or whatever. There's different, you know, uh, it's not just one game with one group of, of people all the time. Right. Uh, you never have to, uh, I mean, there are, players who will who say i will play with anyone they just um want to play they want to play every friday or everything they don't give a shit who shows up they mm -hmm. just want to play mm -hmm. um you know and usually those are guys who are like very successful businessmen who that is their uh, outlet and they may even be at pro level or whatever but you know but uh you know uh i throw the question out there just because i would be curious to see after our conversation i think they, they said yeah they seem like they'd want to see you play yeah okay all right well maybe you, i mean happen. you don't want to be if the problem is you don't want to play like a donk because if you play like a donk then they're going to start calling you big donk <laughs> just saying that's what they're going to say isn't you know? that isn't that what anyone would no would they fear? say garrett the, they say garrett's the king of the stream so they don't they don't say it about garrett no, but isn't that the fear of if, if if anybody who plays that you could be called a donk if you if you lose or if you yeah I guess that's a good know. point yeah 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 good point good point good point you know true, but true, uh, true, true, true. Uh, I'll take that Pepsi challenge okay um, and and I don't care about being uh, called a, a donk if I'm playing because I I want to play damn um, I just thought about this I I challenged Doug Polk to play heads up no limit on his stream. <laughs> You're Maybe we got to go to a different Steve. stream to play. I don't know. No, Maybe we got to go. Well, you, hey, uh, you have an invite to come to uh, you and Doug come to live at the mic, and we'll return the favor somehow. But but barring that, because I would love that, mm -hmm. uh, I would I would tell you, and I'm sure you already know this. Uh, I am sure there would be zero uh, problems with you playing Doug on his stream. He he is, uh, he's, I don't know him personally like you do, but. Everything I've heard about him says he's one of the good one of the good ones, and I can't imagine him ever. Let's let's, let's pray, bro. Let's we can't take that hit. Let's pray. Let's <laughs> pray. We can't take that hit, please. I hope so. I pray every day. Shout out to Doug, right? He he he. I feel like he a great, you know, he a lot of line, of course, right? He say some things people don't agree with him, but I feel like in the poker world, he's a inspiration that a lot of players can look at and and follow, right? Yeah. Great player, one of the best players businessman starts a great training site try to do right by players try to support his friends now trying to put out a great product on the operation side with the lodge and trying to expand that into live poker business so i feel like when you're looking at people who you might want to 
model a career off of, you know, Doug Polk is one of those guys that stands out to me. And I feel like me, right, the older, like when I was looking at coming up, who am I looking at? Like I'm seeing these fucking degenerates, man. They're like, oh, Scotty Wynn, okay, you know, Scotty Wynn, big degen, you know, these all these degens being glorified at ESPN. And then you think that you got to live your life. I mean, that's what I thought, right? I, I was like, oh, I want to be like these guys. These guys are fucking degenerates. What did I turn out to be? Kind of a degenerate, right? Out of line, crazy. <laughs> no, but... But but now I think the new generation of players are a bit like Andrew Nimi. I feel like Brad Owen. These guys are great examples of, you know, they can find inspiration in these guys if you're a player out there watching these guys too. And uh, maybe it leads you down a life of family, a life of a life of peace, a life of in lineness. And uh, and yeah, so I'm excited for what the future has to hold for poker. Yeah. I'm yeah, excited I, to learn. I'm excited to learn these tricks from you too. Hey, uh, let's let's put together a challenge. Uh, you know, we'll get together, spend some time in this deck, and uh, you can you can walk into a game and just literally blow somebody's mind. I'll, I'll show you uh, the path, all for entertainment purposes, right? Only my new my <laughs> my new my new card mechanic mentor, huh? Jesus, Christ, my new for AP protection purposes. Card, new card for card protection purposes only. That's true, <laughs> guys. Listen. We enjoyed having you on here. Thank you very much for tuning in. The next thing I might, I might clip out some from this for tomorrow. The next time I'll be on YouTube is Saturday for the Doug Polk uh, Lodge high stakes live stream. I'll be doing commentary on that show. It's going to be Doug Polk, Brad Owen, my girl, Lib Boris making an appearance. She's done dealing with Elon Musk and she's coming back to poker for a little bit. And uh, another cast of characters will play on that show. That's going to be on Saturday. So tune in for that on the Lodge poker live stream. We're going to have a lot of people watching that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then next week, I'll be, I mean, I hope to do some podcasts. I, I want to have Bryn Kenny on. I want to have Scott Seaver on. And I got some other players coming on. And then, uh, yeah, I might have a deal to announce with one of the companies in the poker world. That's a more uh, serious official deal. Stay tuned for that. And yeah, follow this stuff on my Twitter and Instagram. I'm posting them there a lot. Join Grimo and Poppy GTO. And then Houston, if you want to follow his uh, his uh, show he's working with now, obviously at Live at the Bike, and then you also have another YouTube channel. Do you want to recommend people go check uh, that out? You see, see, if they want to, if they want to learn a little bit about uh, some of the stuff I showed today, you can go to uh, the Card Sharp with a K. Yeah, Card Sharp yeah, with I a K. I put YouTube content channel. on there in ages, but I'm gonna start uh, putting some new stuff on, uh, especially as, as I get closer to releasing my new book. Yeah, I mean, I got some good. I, actually, there are some pretty. Good, I mean, you got a lot of with the talent you got, let's say if you were my, let's say hypothetically, you were my talent, your content strategy would be way fucking different, right? Cause the, I, I work with a lot of talent on more, I like working more behind the scenes than on camera. That's one of my favorite things to do. And yeah. the kind of things that you're doing, I know you know how to package content one way, but I know how to package content a different way. And the things that, that you can do are, are, these are like viral things. These are sick. If they're- Maybe we should do something together, Jeff. Maybe you never know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what the we'll see what's going on here, guys. But see, yeah, we'll if, if that happens, then 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 <laughs> I, I accomplished what I said. A, a modern a modern talent talent uh, person over here. I'm like a modern guy. That's what I. That's like one of my goals. I want to do is work more with talent behind the scenes, which I already do. Yeah. This help them build their brand, build their content out, build their strategies out, help position them in the industry, help them understand how to take advantage of opportunity that might come their way in terms of collaborations or business. And you do or, it for peace or for peace of the action or what? No, I just help cool. my friends out. That's cool. Yeah. That's I mean, really I've cool. always done that in poker. I just thought it was a lot of fun. I've studied this shit every day. So, you know, I might as well put it to good use and, uh, you know, I put it to good use for my own self anyway. So, you know, that's, well, that's anytime you have an opportunity where you think, um, it, it would be helpful to, uh, to not just, just show off and, you know, but to do anything that, that would help someone, uh, you know, protect their game uh, that would need a demonstration or something like that. Mm -hmm. You can always call me. I'm happy to, I'm happy to help out. Cool. Well, guys in the chat, we appreciate you very much for tuning in. Jay Paget, Dark Angel, my man, Eden Rocks, my guy. What's up, Eden? And uh, RMX India, Descent KOD, Leo Baby. Who else we got? Joey P. Give me some guys. I'm, I'm giving a shout. I'm giving final shout outs. Give, give me some names, man. Come on. JT is FTB. I know we don't do a little delay here. Snow Monkey Never Dies, my guy. What's up, Snow Monkey? Lord Octavius, Legendary Podcast. Joey Houston was a very entertaining guest. Thank you very much, as expected. And you, uh, GV as well. Shout out to GV. Who else we got out there? My man, Sn Sur Surf and Snowboard. That's my guy. Crazy guy, bro. Shout out to Surf. And uh, listen, much love. Leo Rod. We'll be back soon. Nicholas Burnett. Teflon Don. Nate Forst. Drop a thumbs up. Yeah, guys, hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. K. What's up, K? Appreciate the comments, K. Appreciate the comments earlier, D. Timmy, two tables. 
Georgie Castro, Nova <laughs> Poker player, Estra 16, CSAP 12, Spence J. I'm running out of air. Houston, any last parts? Any parting words? Uh, parting words. I would say. One more trick. That, uh, let's say when life gives you uh, lemons, you need to make lemonade, but do it fairly. <laughs> Amen to that. Guys in the chat, we out here. Vendor Bay, Ventura Bay, Kyoko, Raymond Rumsey. We'll be back soon. Peace out. Adios. Uh, take it easy, guys. Thanks, brother. Uh, da -da -da. All right. Bang.